It's a space where everyone is free to learn, exchange knowledge, and explore new things. to be here and be part of the launching of Foundry. Tonight we are launching Foundry, a progressive learning center for architecture and the built environment. As you can see, they have murals of our famous architects here and abroad and their famous works as well. Today, we experience the fruit of the collective effort, the collective blood, sweat, and tears of people who we have affinities with. In Foundry, we share a mission and vision of uplifting Filipino architecture and design through progressive education. At Foundry, we believe that uh, we need to make that connection, that it doesn't start, uh, it doesn't end with the board exam. Getting the license is just the start of a new journey and uh, that's why at Foundry we believe in uh, that we need to keep on learning. It is built on a strong foundation of service that permeates every aspect of this learning center. From every corner of this room to the literal writings on the wall. But its radiant light will continue infinitely when its light is shared and passed on. We hope you'll make yourselves comfortable here at Foundry. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone.
excited to start a uh, new practice is co-presented by Babel. And to officially start our program, let's hear a few words from our um, uh, partner, uh, Jason Bensalido, the Chief Design Ambassador of Bensalido Architects. Take it away, Jason. Hi, everyone. Can everyone see my screen and hear me properly? I think I'm on mute. Hold on. Can you see my screen, Jel? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. So just uh, we have a lot of ground to cover today, so I'm just going to try to keep it as short as possible. Firstly, thanks to um, all of our speakers for kind of gracing us with uh, their presence. We're all excited to learn about uh, you know, what you guys do and what your agenda um, is uh, per practice, right? Uh, but just to, and also, of course, to all of our guests today for uh, spending a few hours of your Sunday afternoon uh, with us. So just a little bit of uh, introduction about Babel. So Babel really is, uh, you know, a series of talks um, on contemporary Philippine architecture, arts, and design, which um, actually started as an internal learning program in our office. So our office, Buen Salido Architects, uh, founded this idea of Babel um, because, uh, you know, in typical offices, you have different teams, right? And each team handle handles different projects with their own learnings in, in, and experiences. And so this platform became a... A, a kind of an opportunity for all of the teams to learn uh, unique experiences that each project would bring uh, to the table. And so this culture of learning that uh, we kind of, uh, you know, enjoyed internally, we decided to open it up uh, to, the, to the public. So Babel really is in the intersection of this uh, deep desire to learn, this uh, desire to advance, uh, you know, uh, the idea of architecture, and uh, sort of try to find ways on how to champion culture, identity, um, and this, this idea of arts and culture into the architecture that hopefully will inspire all of the attendees to uh, you know, contribute to this idea of positive change through whatever field uh, that you belong in. And so eventually, uh, we grew Babel and opened it up into not only the architectural field, but also to, to the different sectors of creative arts. So of course, architecture is still our core because that's uh, really where we started. But then we slowly opened it up to arts, you know, like music, literature, fashion, um, and even design. So interior designers, uh, you know, spoke and shared the, their fields on, on our platform, industrial design, furniture design, and uh, so on. And so this idea of... Uh, sort of cross-pollination is uh, and learning from different fields and sort of applying it in your uh, own uh, sphere of influence is where Babel really exists. And so we started this way back in 2015, at least publicly in a small coffee shop on our street with our own design ambassadors as uh, the speakers. And then the year after, that's when we uh, sort of opened it up to different fields. So we were joined with Vince Slim of BCL Asia, uh, speaking about landscape architecture. Chris Abrigo, who is a contemporary artist, a mural artist. He's uh, an urban artist. So, you know, all of his art sort of engaged with the street and the buildings that uh, he sort of experiences on a daily basis. That was also when Rick Dindap of Design to, uh, for Tomorrow spoke about branding and identity and sort of how to identify the uniqueness of each project and how to reflect it in uh, physical form. Um, and then the year after that, uh, we, we, we uh, invited Joey Elviar of uh, Team Manila, you know, the group that's famous for putting shades on uh, Jose Rizal, right? And of course, the dynamic duo of uh, interior design, Ivy and Cynthia Almario, spoke about, you know, luxury in interior design and how this can also come up with a unique identity for projects. Uh, we had a conversation uh, with Daniel De La Cruz, who is a very... Uh, well-known and very prolific uh, kind of sculptor that, uh, you know, even if he's uh, involved with the static art, uh, always integrates a kinetic uh, feel and uh, characteristic in all of his uh, output. And then in 2018, uh, we invited Aaron Palileo of Bootleg uh, Innovation and Design and how to use creativity 
to sort of come up with strategies that you can now infuse in the business setting. So uh, Bootleg uh, partnered up with this group from Japan called CIA. So it's not the one in the States, no, but it's uh, called Creative Intelligence uh, Agency, if I'm not mistaken. And they're involved with the branding and the story and the architecture and even the interior design of Uniqlo from the very start. Chat Forest spoke about uh, you know, interior design and interior spaces that wow. Um, and uh, Mike Constantino spoke about uh, sonic identity. So, you know, we're all familiar with branding as visual identity. But here uh, comes Homonym, which is the group that he leads, uh, who introduces this idea of sonic identity and how certain uh, sonic characteristics can be attributed to the identity of your company or your persona and, uh, and so on. And uh, for the last speaker for that year, it was Edwin Uy from CDO, who also has a practice here in Manila, speaking about design authenticity and experimental architecture uh, and uh, design. And in 2019 was our most exciting and most energetic uh, babble, in, in my opinion, because it was started off uh, by Gabe Mercado, who is uh, the founder of SPIT, which is an improvisation group. And how, you know, this, this, uh, how this art of improvising uh, in, a, in an unplanned situation can be applied to the corporate setting and even in design, which is really all about problem solving. Bambi Maniosa spoke about her passion um, and advocacy of, uh, you know, introducing culture through play and uh, song. So Awit at Laro is uh, the foundation that she leads. Jingoy Buensuceso, uh, who is a very famous uh, and prolific, again, sculptor, uh, spoke about how he is, he is crossing over to our realm of um, architectural and uh, space design. And uh, the last speaker at that time was uh, architect Joseph Javier, who spoke about the design of purpose and how we can use architecture to transform not only the spaces that we design, but also uh, the people involved in the spaces that we build. So, you know, the contractors, uh, the associations in the Philippines, how there needs to be a transformation so that we can all advance and progress as a nation. And that was the first time that we invited performers, right? Uh, and then we integrated, uh, you know, music and even dance uh, in the whole experience of Babo. So, Bea Lorenzo, who uh, plays uh, the kalimba, which is a South African uh, instrument, uh, graced us with a few songs. Um, Project Yas uh, also did a few uh, performances. And then we were surprised uh, by Bambi Maniosa with a performance by Bullet Dumas, who was a very famous indie, uh, you know, a songwriter and artist. And while he was actually um, singing a contemporary version of Jack and Poi, uh, it was being uh, interpreted in a contemporary dance form by Joseph La Chica. Um, 2019 also was uh, the year Foundry was uh, uh, opened and uh, officially launched. And as one of its uh, maiden sort of events, uh, we collaborated with Spam Talks and uh, you know, um, invited uh, the members of Spam to speak about uh, you know, their values and how it can bring value to not only architecture, but also their projects and also to uh, the communities that uh, the projects uh, exist in. So Benjamin Mendoza of Baad spoke, Sudar Kadka of Insight, uh, uh, I Insight, sorry, Boxy of Zubu Design Associates, who is uh, one of our partners for Foundry Cebu. Uh, I shared about uh, you know, contemporary Philippine architecture and Choi Funk spoke about uh, you know, advanced architecture. 2019 was uh, a lot of a year of uh, a lot of partnerships actually with uh, you know different entities and so again with spam uh, we partnered up uh, to be involved uh, with uh, you know a series of conversations that was held in uh, Davao so there was a spam bubble talks held in Davao uh, with previous speakers there and one of uh, the spam members uh, Edwin Uy started A and DDO which is a design festival in Cagayan de Oro, so he invited uh, industrial designers uh, like uh, Stanley Ruiz. Uh, Dan Matutina is part of Hydra, and he's a graphic designer um, as well. And of course, the previous speakers of uh, Babbles and of course, the other members of uh, SPAM shared a little bit about their practices. Uh, 2020 was actually supposed to be a big or a bigger step for Babbel. We wanted actually to hold it 
uh, well, uh, September 4 sana, no? and then we, we were conceiving it to be a two-day kind of architecture festival. But then, of course, we all know what happened. COVID came and uh, disrupted all of our 2020 plans. So everything was canceled, including Babel. Um, and the cadence of uh, that festival would have been a talk, uh, a musical uh, kind of uh, performance, and a panel discussion uh, that attempts to cover all of these uh, subtopics of architecture, arts, and uh, design. And so because we weren't able to do that, uh, we kind of spun off Babel into a series of uh, live uh, sessions, which is still available, of course, for viewing um, in, in our page, uh, Buen Salido Architects, if uh, you're interested to uh, listen in uh, on some of the you know, topics that we discussed, which uh, lead us to today. So today is actually a series, the first of four bubbles that we are planning to hold uh, within September leading into October. So new praxis uh, is uh, what we're going to be holding today, which will lead into the world is our stage on September 17 and September 20, where we invited the you know, World Architecture Festival finalists from the Philippines. Uh, so, Bach is there, Jesse of uh, Alero, uh, and of course, Jamie, Carlo Calma, and John Ryan Santos. So, hopefully, you guys can also join us there. These two are uh, also in partnership with the International Design Conference this month and the Design Week Philippines in October, both um, organized by the Design Center of the Philippines under DDI. So, these two uh, events uh, would uh, hopefully lead up uh, to a culmination of past forward on October 2 and 3. So this is uh, sort of the official Babel that is going to be affiliated with Design Week. So past forward is sort of an investigation between the past, present, and future, the ongoing story of uh, Philippine architecture. It's going to be divided into two days, two speakers per day. Um, and then the first two speakers will be Edson Cabalfin, who was uh, one of the uh, curators of the Philippine Pavilion in the uh, Venice Architecture Biennale. Architect Dominic Galicia will speak about timelessness in architecture, touching on you know, uh, areas and heritage that need to be preserved, like Escolta, the very controversial Film Life building that uh, is being demolished as we speak. Carlo Calma will speak speak about the future of um, architecture and uh, myself will speak about uh, contemporary Philippine architecture. So leading us to a little bit of introduction to today's uh, topic. So, you know, part of Babel's investigation, um, of course, is not only the current uh, and future uh, practice of architecture, not only the current practitioners, uh, but also the future uh, practitioners. No? So um, in, in not only in my opinion, but um, I think the youth has always been a source of hope, um, sort of uh, uh, who we will pass the baton to eventually when uh, they, they dominate the practice of um, architecture at the time, at, uh, during their time. But uh, this, this uh, kind of new uh, series of Babel, this new praxis, will not stop today. It will not uh, end today. So I imagine that this can be a series uh, wherein new practitioners can use this platform to speak about their own agendas as uh, new practices, right? Because as I look back in my own experience when I uh, put up my firm, and even I think uh, some of the, uh, my contemporaries would share this, that the previous generations, at least from our standpoint, uh, didn't really reach out to us um, and gave us a public platform wherein we can share our agenda, um, our reasons for being, our dreams for Philippine architecture, and uh, sort of what we were reacting to um, in their generations, right? And so we wanted to give this platform, or to start this platform, so that new ideas can be put out there, and so that us previous practitioners can also learn uh, from uh, the new practices that are popping up everywhere, to sort of empathize with them, to not, because uh, that's what's happening with multiple generations, right? Like, for example, the gen, uh, the baby boomers uh, always condemn the millennials because, you know, they're, they're all about 
uh, they say that they're they're oriented towards self. They're all in a rush, whereas millennials say that no, you don't understand us. You know, you don't even get get technology and so on. So there's always a divisive line between generations that we sort of wanted to uh, break away because of uh, through this platform. So as a previous practitioner relative to these, uh, you know, promising and uh, well, great uh, you know, practices that uh, we're going to be listening to today, we wanted to reach out to them so that uh, we can understand where they're coming from, what are their, uh, you know, what's their agenda, and uh, what are they reacting to as far as uh, you know, the previous generation is concerned, so that we can co-learn and, uh, I guess, learn from each other so that we can move forward as a uh, collective. So basically, that's the reason for uh, starting new praxis. Uh, Angel, you want to you know, jump right in and introduce our first speaker? I was about to say, thank you, Jace. Um, speaking of generations, us millennials, um, and uh, a portion of our audience are Gen Z, Far from that point where there's uh, from a from a point na there's nothing more fulfilling for a teacher to see their students uh, make it in the in the in the big in the big of, of Gerard and myself. So um, we'd like to introduce Sangai Architects. They are an architecture firm based in Metro Manila specializing in the modern and innovative utilization of bamboo as a main building material. The firm also encourages contextual, contemporary vernacular Filipino design through the use of locally abundant products such as bamboo combined with cultural elements and locally made and handcrafted products in the design. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome Christian Salandanan and Kat Tapungay of Sangai Architects. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Can you hear us clearly? Uh, is the video clearly the same as well? Yeah, can can okay. you? Uh, I'm Christian and this is Kat. We're from uh, Sangai Architects. And what we'll present or rather share next uh, is something that's very personal to us, something that we're really passionate about. I'd like to start with this. Ano tumatatak sa atin or anong naaalala natin pag narinig natin yung salitang bamboo, kawaya? Uh, what comes to our mind? Toothpick, bahay kubo, fencing, and this is the most, uh, the saddest uh, part, uh, poor man's material. Pag sinabing bamboo, it's, it's always for for poor, uh, a poor man's timber. And um, these are the reasons uh, why we created our group. And uh, we want to change the notion or um, perception of people towards this material. And um, because we believe that there's an untapped potential for bamboo. And it's a matter of uh, proper utilization and exploration for the material. That's why we created uh, Sangai Architects and uh, Bambusa Construction. Uh, we're, we're representing uh, two teams. One is a, a design firm and uh, the other one is a construction company. Why separate? Uh, because we believe, again, we believe in, the, in bamboo as a building material and uh, the reason why we created uh, Bambusa is we want other designers as well uh, to express their own uh, design interpretation, design intent with bamboo. And the role is just for us to help them uh, make it into uh, a reality to actually bridge the gap of uh, the implementer, the technical side. And uh, our philosophy, both companies revolves around, uh, we believe that unique environmentally connected spaces and spatial experiences can be crafted through the holistic use of bamboo as main building material. In short, uh, we really believe in bamboo as a building material. 
from uh, finishes to structural use and the different uh, byproducts of it. Now, let us share to you uh, our process. Kat will explain um, this one. Okay. How do we craft our spaces? Well, the good thing about uh, bamboo architecture is that it starts with the brief. So usually it starts with, um, I have this beautiful, beautiful land uh, in the mountains or this beautiful land uh, beside the beach or in the jungle, you know, or in an untouched uh, natural environment. So what we realize is that the environment is always unique. So there's always something different that it offers. So for example, in the mountains, beside the sea, or at the, at, right at the center of the lake, it's always unique. It always has its own beauty. So how do we craft the space when, it, when there's already something beautiful? First is, we experience the environment firsthand. So um, it always starts with how do we approach it? How do we go there? How does it feel? Uh, how does it sound actually? Even the sound, we always consider it. And then we see the potential of the site. We, we always aim to complement the surroundings. We always aim to put something that actually emphasizes the beauty of it, beauty of it or uh, makes it even more exemplary. For example, at the center of the lake, we, we don't want to put something that is, uh, that is enclosed, an enclosed shell. We always want to have something that even more uh, admires it. We always want to put something that uh, you know, embraces the environment and the activity that you can do there. So for example, this project um, that we did, uh, so it's a yoga pavilion at the center, uh, on top of actually the lake. We put uh, concrete pedestals, and on top of that is um, where we use this bamboo. As you can see, there's a, there's a 270 degree view of the lake. So instead of enclosing the space with walls, instead of you know, putting a, a space that doesn't even recognize its environment, we always want to put something, a bamboo structure that has a relationship with its environment. And then it in itself has its own uh, experience to offer. So also this, uh, a church also by the lake. We always want to curate something, something that differs in experience. We don't just want to build a bahay kubo or just a bamboo building as much as possible. We want to um, explore the different possibilities of bamboo um, by also embracing its environment beside it or around it. So as you can see, there's this bamboo structure that opens up all the way to its environment. So for example, this church, oh, sorry. Here, you can see at the center is the cross, but all around it are the environment. And then the bamboo serves as just the covering. And then here is another project. As you can see, we all always uh, want to play with the context. There's always something beautiful about the environment. For example, this has a nice view of the mountains. We always open it up. And then at the top is the covering, the bamboo covering, which always um, play with a repetitive base to show the beauty of the structural bamboo. So as much as possible, we want to veer away from the notion of uh, bamboo is just this, that bamboo, is, uh, bamboo has a limit. We always want to explore 
as you can see earlier in the presentation, we showed um, uh, multiple bays. Now here we um, showed that we can actually do something more. For example, bu bundle poles uh, or arches. We can do Gothic bamboo architecture. We can do so much more. Um, it's not just uh, Bahay Kubo anymore with the proper uh, innovative connections with the proper construction and the proper tre treatment. Um, this is actually possible. So um, to mix the traditional material, to make it more um, uh, timely, we want to explore with modern forms so that at least there's something new about it. And then upon visualizing the experience, this is actually the part wherein we, um, we usually collaborate with different architects as well. So upon visualizing the experience that we want for our spaces, we create scaled models. So, uh, yeah, so bamboo, sorry. so bamboo is, um, since it's, it's, it's a three-dimensional building, it's usually the poles, there's a, always an intricacy in it. Um, for us to relay this to the workers, we have to create scaled models for them to understand. Because um, if we do just the 2D drawings, the plans, we, they won't be able to understand it on site. So what we do is we do this scaled models for them to see, even during construction, they have this, for them to see what goes where, for example, this pole, where does it go after? So it's really, a uh, a different approach. It's not uh, from the. It's not from the uh, uh, schematic phase right uh, straight to the design development. It's usually there's a counter check between the different traits as well. So here's an example of a scaled model we did for a church. So aside from the scaled model for craftsmen. This is actually a, uh, for a built project already. So what we do from the schematic drawing, for the, from the conceptual drawing, is we model everything from the, from the columns to every pole of the building so that we can actually um, coordinate it with structural engineers. So unlike what the usual, like, like what the notion of um, bamboo is just temporary or bamboo is just instinctive, um, we want to be as technical as possible in using it. So uh, what we do is we, uh, from the, also a consideration in our um, schematic is how do we use the structural uh, part of the building as its aesthetic itself. So it has to be true to itself. So what we do from the schematic is we coordinate with our structural engineers so this is an interesting part because uh, we have a local and foreign uh, structural engineer to actually verify if um, our bamboo buildings are strong enough. So here is a process. Actually, we are uh, modeling every single piece of the poles up to its conceptualization. So here's an example just to show that bamboo is actually being tested. Um, this photo is not ours, but uh, we're just showing this to show that um, bamboo actually, yeah, we do testings and bamboo has data and we can actually do computed buildings so that we don't just uh, produce uh, temporary bamboo buildings. It's more of uh, innovating the material to make it more acceptable um, to the code and uh, to this modern time. So as you can see, every, every, part, every part of the building has a detail. Everything is crucial for its permanence. So as you can see, this uh, pavilion that we did, on the left is the digital model and the right is the actual photo. So as, as much as possible, we want to, uh, we want to make everything uh, as clear as possible so that 
uh, we can actually implement what's on the drawing. So even the lighting. So as you can see, the left part is the computer visualization of the lighting, and on the right is the actual photo. So for our architectural plans, every, every part of the building has details and are all computed locally and internationally. Here's another project. Uh, this one is actually a casita uh, for a resort project. So we used uh, giant bamboo poles, uh, bu bundled poles. So as you can see, everything is uh, still in detail. This is the uh, photo under construction. And then when we're not using bamboo in the structural part of the building, we want to explore in all of the elements. For example, the doors, the wall, the railing, um, the finishing, the lights, actually, everything. So here's a closer look at the doors. So, um, Here's a, an, a one way we, we uh, what do you call this? One way we explore bamboo is through the use of this. We always want to explore with combining natural materials or locally made products in our interiors so that uh, everything is holistic as well. So, uh, the process of fusing bamboo in the buildings does not usually end in the drawing board. And it's not um, the conventional way that we always use in, or we always do in the construction. So it's a more of going back and forth. Um, it's a trial and error. It's a exploring how to always um, make the process better. So uh, Christian is gonna explain how um, the process of constructing bamboo is. Okay. After the design, the implementation actually doesn't uh, start inside. Holistic bamboo implementation, I uh, would say, is composed of four steps. Harvesting, treatment, construction, and post-construction. Let me run to you uh, our process on how uh, we do it. Again, what's ma what makes uh, bamboo design interesting is um, after drawing board, you actually uh, don't go to the site, but rather you go into the woods where uh, the bamboo will be sourced. Why? It's very important uh, to actually know the material uh, from where uh, it grows. For the reason that, uh, say, species selection, uh, species selection plays an important role in designing bamboo. Each bamboo uh, species have uh, its own characteristics, the exterior diameter, the wall thickness. So uh, what about it? If you have a design that you want um, to have a thicker profile, you can use giant bamboo. If you want uh, to have a, a smaller profile, you can use another species. And um, it, it, it also determines the strength and uh, the capacity uh, of the free uh, length of the bamboo. If, for example, if I want to do a, a cantilever of uh, six meters or uh, a straight pole with more than 10 meters, then uh, I cannot use, uh, I, I need to use this uh, type of species. The one that you can see in the photo is uh, actually a giant bamboo. As you can see the, the diameter of it, um, it's almost the size of my body. And um, but, uh, don't be tricked by it. Uh, not all uh, bamboo with, uh, the ex with large diameter is already suitable for construction. It takes uh, four to six years to actually uh, let the bamboo mature and um, let its density, uh, that's it, let, it, let its fibers um, gain the needed uh, density. And this is what I'm talking about regarding uh, the length. This specific species grows for about uh, 20 to 30 meters in, in height. 
So if I want to have a 15 meters pole, then uh, I'll be using uh, this type of species. Then if, because some uh, species say kawai and tinik, uh, I can only get uh, six meters uh, free span. So those things that uh, you need to consider with uh, implementation as well. And um, also interesting part of uh, designing and implementing is uh, planning the logistics and hauling. Where do, you sort, where do you source the bamboo? Do you source it near the site or do you source it uh, sa, uh, forest inside? You have to know, uh, is there an access? Is there a truck that can actually uh, haul it? And, uh, but what's interesting with the process is, um, for us is the involvement of local communities during the process, during the whole process of uh, construction from harvesting na nakikipagtrabaho kami sa kanila, uh, giving them livelihood, uh, them being part and uh, taking pride of pag uh, natayo yung building, we're part of it. Uh, That's very important of our process and uh, it's not just uh, tapping yung mga uh, commercial products na readily available. Uh, it adds up to the story uh, of the building as well. Also with treatment process, I would say bamboo is not a new material in the Philippines. We've been using it for hundreds of years from games, household tools, folklore stories, but most of these items are actually gone due to weathering and or other turned into dust. But it's with recent technological advancement, both with treatment and connection, that makes it possible to design a bamboo that can last at least 30 years. So as I would always say, it's not the problem with the material. It's how you utilize uh, the full capacity and potential of it. And uh, we need to treat bamboo for uh, two types, uh, fungi and insects. You have to know kung bakit siya nag deteriorate You have uh, to know the basics of it and uh, um, apply necessary uh, preventive measures for it. On our side, um, there are a lot of processes. First is, after harvesting, you need to ensure that there is a proper storage and stacking. Uh, dito pa lang sa part na to is very critical. Why? Because if uh, you'll just buy poles uh, directly na nakaputol na, you don't know where it came from, chances are there's already infestation in it. Because uh, if you cut it, give it less, uh, more or less two weeks, infestation will, will already start. So you need to take control from uh, the clump to harvesting to stacking and ensure that uh, you're going through the right process. And after which you have to dip it on our, on our process, uh, we use the dipping method in uh, uh, the treatment solution. Uh, we ensure that from inside and out it's treated. Uh, here in the Philippines, um, one of um, the misconceptions is we treat the exterior only. The problem with it is um, the inner side of uh, bamboo is actually uh, softer than uh, the outside. But when you see holes in it, the powder, uh, uh, those are actually exit holes. Those holes that you see are actually exit holes, meaning uh, they've already uh, eaten uh, and uh, infested the inside of the bamboo, leaving you with a thin wall just the outside, which creates a, a misconception of okay naman tong bamboo uh, pa natin. Uh, it's still strong, it's still durable, but when you knock on it, it's already almost hollow. So we need to treat uh, bamboo from inside and out. And um, on our part, we do it uh, uh, through a dipping method and ensure that uh, uh, every part of the bamboo is um, uh, well treated. And uh, also proper drying and storing of holes. And I'd like to share that uh, this is one thing that's very uh, exciting and enjoyable about bamboo building. You get to uh, see the whole process, um, and it's uh, I'll be transparent. It's always a, it's most of the time tri uh, trial and error. Why? Because in the Philippines, it's it's just emerging. It's just starting. Uh, we don't have that much solid background with innovative and uh, um, large scale projects with bamboo. But uh, the important, as I would always say to my team, the important, uh, it's not wrong to make mistakes. The important is you do solutions after it. Uh, you check uh, what's wrong, how do we improve it, what do we do next? And as always, every project, uh, 
you always uh, better your um, process, you better your um, the way you build, the way you treat, the way you score. So those things. And uh, if for this one, this is a storage rack. Uh, when storing bag, we needed to elevate it a bit uh, on the ground, right, and, uh, to prevent uh, dampening. Kim pagangat ng mga tubig ng tubig, marat mo na sa soil. And then the construction part is uh, the fun part. Why? Because you get to implement this collective process. You've gone through the design, you got to the to the material preparation. Now it's time to uh, turn your visions into reality. And um, in every project, there's always and should always be uh, a mock-up of uh, innovative uh, connections. Say, if you're using repetitive base, uh, it's, an, it's an important uh, step for us to uh, create mock-ups of uh, those base and um, introduce innovative uh, bamboo connections. Also, one thing that uh, I love the most with working with the uh, local workers and skilled bamboo craftsmen is it's always a two-way learning process. Why? I don't know everything about bamboo. They they know something already from uh, based on uh, what they do. Say, nagkakawayan, uh, gumagawa ng furniture, bahay, kubo. Then I introduce them a uh, new technique. Uh, this is another way of connecting it. This is another use balls instead of nails. Uh, use this treatment instead of this, and um, they will learn. And uh, along the process as well, uh, there are solutions or suggestions coming from us. Na tinatanong namin sa uh, nasasabi namin sa kanila, and then uh, they will suggest uh, why not let's use this type of uh, connection or uh, let's put the poles here. And uh, this is a, this is the best part. Uh, I think it's always a collaborative process. So I think it's we're just, architects are just guides. Uh, you never feel cold during the process. We're just guide uh, along them, uh, telling them that there are uh, other possible solutions, other ideas, and it's always uh, enjoyable working with them. And uh, you need precise craftsmanship. That's one thing with bamboo. Uh, you need to develop that mentality that na, uh, hindi pwede yung okay na you need to uh, do best uh, when uh, crafting those uh, connection details. This is the most important uh, part. If you don't have a good uh, connection, then uh, there will be uh, eccentricity in the, in the force transfer and all. It will not be that uh, fully effective. And um, workers learning the art and craft of bamboo construction, as I would say a while ago, uh, it's always a fun part when new workers get to involve uh, with our project. Uh, they learn the craft, and um, after each project, sabi nila, ah, kaya na natin gumawa ng mas malaki dyan and all. So, workers are uh, really learning. Say, for this one, I've seen uh, the development of gathering um, almost entirely new uh, set of workers for this project. And uh, with some, most of them actually have uh, minimal. Uh, knowledge with uh, working with bamboo, but uh, along the way I've seen um, how they grow, how they develop, and uh, how they turn this project into reality. Now, uh, like to, this is the last project that uh, is very close to our heart, and uh, recently con uh, finished MLR Policy Games Pavilion. Why? Because we started Sangai with the vision of elevating uh, the value of the material. Uh, of uh, canceling or actually uh, changing the notion that it's just for poor man's timber. And uh, this project actually have a per perfect pre for that. Why? They told us that we want to have uh, a pavilion to cater for VBIT guests, uh, for uh, the sultans and um, sultans of Brunei and other VBIT guests, but we want to use bamboo. So for me, Okay, this is a perfect project. Uh, they want to use a poor man's timber for the Royal Pavilion. And uh, we start with, uh, started with the 3D visualization for uh, this and um, created a miniature model used by the workers on site for construction. From time to time, they will grab it, check if uh, they actually measure it on site. Uh, what's the length of these poles? Uh, how many poles are uh, connected? Uh, is it going under or above another pole, and etc. 
And uh, we want to be as technical as possible in terms of implementing uh, every project, say for this one, uh, up to going to checking the moisture content uh, of each bamboo, ensuring that uh, prior to implementation, it's already um, dry for uh, a good enough period. And uh, determining new bamboo construction methodologies that fits the needs of each project. Say for this one, uh, we are only limited with four months uh, from design to implementation. It's a 750 uh, square meter uh, development. So the only way for us uh, to make it possible is uh, simultaneous work. Uh, bamboo works on ground and then uh, while they're doing concrete works on site. And uh, again, the precise uh, manual crafting of uh, bamboo connection. You know, when you go to the site and see them actual uh, working with the material, you'll get surprised as, as to how skilled uh, these people are. And uh, we want to break the notion of uh, the bamboo's limitation. We want to challenge how it's used, how, uh, what form nagamit uh, Say for this one, we want to bend the uh, bamboo. And uh, we use bundled bamboo slats to create a uh, bent uh, ring beam or roof beam because uh, we want uh, to explore uh, different patterns, different forms, different functions of what bamboo can offer. And lastly, a uh, satisfying part is uh, workers really enjoying and taking pride of their craft. Pag naririnig mo sa kanila, ah, kami gumawa niyan. It's very, very uh, touching and um, parang okay. Really, it won't be possible without you guys. And uh, again, new local workers uh, being involved and then after which the technology transfer that's also interesting. Um, then we have a set of skilled workers and then uh, we uh, inject a new set of uh, workers, new teams. Then they get to learn uh, his uh, skills, uh, craftsmanship, and then for the next project or for the next uh, Bamboo project, even if uh, they're not with us already, uh, they get to share and actually implement um, uh, what they've learned from connection to treatment. And uh, for us, it's it's really a good thing. Why? Because we want the, we want to mainstream the use of bamboo, and it's not about uh, us only uh, practicing it. We want uh, other designers, other workers to actually implement bamboo because it's one of our dream to actually uh, see a lot of bamboo buildings, be it designed by us, constructed by us or not. Uh, as long as uh, people see the potential of uh, this material and implement it because we have a lot of uh, uh, potential in terms of uh, this material in this country. It's just not uh, being utilized fully. And uh, so these are the um, actual photos. There's a 12 uh, meters height uh, structure. And in terms of form, uh, we want, it's inspired by the, our basic vernacular house, but again, um, in, uh, interpreted on a contemporary manner. And uh, different uh, patterns, say it's elevated on pedestal to actually create uh, a clear view of uh, the polo playing field. And ensure that, um, this so one is uh, created with a structural base, uh, connected using bolts and mortar, and um, treated well. Again, well, the beauty of uh, bamboo is, for me, is in the repetition. It creates its own uh, unique beauty that, uh, say, a concrete cannot uh, mimic or uh, metal alone cannot uh, uh, mimic as well. And uh, again, at, at night, this is an interior view uh, at night. We're very particular with uh, lighting because it adds up to uh, the ambiance. It boosts uh, the details of uh, bamboo, highlighting those uh, different uh, structural big configurations. And this is the entrance of uh, of the tunnel of uh, the pavilion. It's elevated on a concrete pedestal, actually. So I'd like to end with this. Uh, there is still a lot of backlogs in terms of uh, Philippine architecture uh, bamboo development. And um, we're still way behind compared with uh, foreign practices, Colombia, Latin America, Vietnam, India. Um, 
we're way behind with the practice. But uh, for me, the, the important thing is uh, we move forward, uh, even with small, th small steps, progressive ways, uh, trial and error, uh, make mistake, develop it, improve the process next time, improve the design next time. And um, on our part, our team, we're doing it one bamboo at a time. Thank you. That ends our presentation. Thank you very much, Kristen and Kath of Shanghai Architects. Thank you so um, much. Thank uh, you. Gerard, what can you what can you say about uh, Shanghai? Grabe. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Firstly, <Mr. Pan> Papa. <laughs> Firstly, yeah, I'm very very proud of you, Christian and Kath. You know, I still remember the time that we were. Uh, doing some doodles in the design <laughs> class in UST. <laughs> no, and I'm very proud of you guys. And uh, what I've learned from your presentation is that details is very details are very important. No, and uh, co-learning with your team. No, parang siya sabi, it's uh, with uh, exploration with this kind of material is is um, um, an avenue for co-learning. No, so I, I really appreciate your presentation. Thank you. How about you, Angel? <laughs> it's siguro ang takeaway ko from them is not trying to do every what everyone else does, but knowing mm -hmm. what you want to specialize in, specialize at, and being good at that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, um, again from from uh, I, I, going back also to the times when um, uh, we were in the classroom. May episodes yan na everyone else was doing schematics sketching. Uh -huh. And then merong isang studyante <laughs> got into trouble because she was doing her, her work in, in the computer in 3D. <laughs> so, uh, that said, ano pa lang, um, studyante pa lang, ano na talaga, outlier na meron. Al alam nyo lang, uh, we want to, to focus at, we really want to be good at, right? So guys, I know you've, uh, you've you have a lot of questions. I would like to ask you to 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 stay, take, uh, parang put those questions on hold. We'll have time later on uh, to to ask those questions. But for now, um, we thank uh, Sangai Architects. They'll be staying with us until the end of the program. We have to introduce our next uh, practice for this afternoon. Um, so thank you, Christian and Kath. Uh, yeah, do stand by for the q and later. Guys, to introduce our next uh, practice. So we have Headroom. Headroom is an architectural design studio based in Manila. Founded in 2014, the studio was started by three Adamsonian architects. Kat Clemente, Andrew Trinidad, and Kevin Yeves. Headroom's current projects range from residential, hospitality, and commercial projects including restaurant and retail, each born out of ideation, collaboration, and the strong belief in the value of good design. The studio's mission is to make architecture accessible to all and hopes for the day when good design is not just a privilege, but enjoyed by all. Everyone, please welcome Kevin Nieves of Headroom. Take it away, Kevin. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Turn the screen. Hi. All right. Can you see the screen? Yes. All right. You can see your PowerPoint. But hindi nag the slideshow. Ayun. Okay. So we're headroom. We are yung nga, from based in Manila, no? And we believe ito yung aming uh, philosophy. Everybody deserves good design. So there's a strong emphasis on the word good. Good, hindi siya in a way na parang minimeasure mo ng good, better, best. No? Good is uh, parang, it speaks more of the value na binibigay mo sa project, sa client. So, yun. So, for this talk, uh, for this 30-minute talk, um, ito yung, I'll go through this. No? So, how we started, how we do what we do, how we are adapting to the pandemic, and our inspirations. So, siguro yung mga design heroes namin later on, if may time pa. So, 
Ito kami, si Andrew, si Kat, ako. 10 kilos ago. So, kaming tatlo, magkakaibigan talaga kami sa school ever since, no? Sa pag-uwi sa LRT, pagsakay ng tren, pa-uwi. Kami-kami itong magkakasabay. Taga North kami and we studied in Adamson. So, we started our uh, practice with an email address noong... <laughs> Uh, August 28, 2014. No? So, kakaselebrate lang namin na 6th year anniversary namin. Tatlo. So, uh, kanina pinag-usapan ni, sinabi ni Sangay, no? yung kanilang process, yung design process nila. Well, I can also talk about our design process, pero I think you've heard it from other architects before. no? Um, I think medyo related din naman yung design processes natin with, in terms of design thinking. But I'd like to take this opportunity to also tell the story of how we started and how we continued to grow kahit may pandemic. No, kasi I think that's also a story in itself. So, meron book no, si Ali and Cuba, yung unfair advantage. So, sinasabi niya dito na karami na startups, lahat tayo actually meron kanya-kanyang unfair advantages. So, group siya into anim. So, una, money, merong pera, merong resources, or a startup. Pangalawa, you can either have uh, intelligence, insight sa isang field na parang ikaw expert. Pangalawa, nasa tamang location ka at merong maswerte ka. Pangapat, may education and expertise ka over something. No? Halimbawa, nag-aaral kang Harvard, nag-aaral kang kung saan man. No? And lastly, yung status. So, tinitingnan ko yan ngayon. <laughs> Nagsimula ka bing tatlo. Iisa lang meron kami dyan, which is location, tsaka yung swerte. Kasi nasa sa Manila kami, and karamihan ng architectural projects, sa to say, no, dito karamihan development during those times. So, location and luck. And meron kami grit. Medyo, ano kami, uh, competitive in spirit kami, no. So, since college pa lang, nagpapagalingan na kami sa mga plates. So, ayun. So, how did we start our firm? So, ito yung minutes namin nung August 28, nung first meeting namin. So, as you can see, malakas yung focus namin on marketing. So, from the start pa lang, we know that ang game ng architectural practice talaga is getting yourself out there. So, my advice for you young professionals, no, you start to build up your brand, your image as early as now, kahit nag-start uh, nag pa lang kayo mag-review for the board exam. So, I won't go much into that detail. So, for the first few years, ito yung value proposition namin. Kung paano kami nagpapakilala sa mga potential clients. So, from our first to second year, ito yung value proposition namin. E sabi namin, we are young, we are tireless, and we are affordable. So, medyo nakaka-cringe yung, <laughs> nakaka yung dulong sentence, diba? we are affordable. Pero sad to say, ganyan yung approach namin sa marketing before. Kasi ang logic namin nun, wala kami laban sa ibang architects na established na ang kaya lang namin ipaglaban is yung price namin. So, ang approach namin dyan, business to client. No? Diretso kami sa mga may ari ng bahay, may mga potential projects. Tapos, 60% ng projects namin during those times are not really the full architectural scope. Hindi kami nakakuha ng from concept to construction drawings. Karamihan na nakukuha namin mga visualization projects. Halimbawa, may matandang architect, hindi marunong mag-V-ray. So, ibaba to sa amin, charge kami per view. So, doon nag-start yung headroom no? sa mga sideline-sideline na projects na gano'n. And, nga, may focus kami on affordability. So, I'll show lang yung mga projects na ginawa namin during those times. So, ito yung talagang project na nagpa-start sa amin bumuo ng, project, ng, ng firm. Isa tong service station, gasolinahan sa SETEX. And ang gusto nila kasi is not just a uh, gasolinahan. Gusto nila commercial din, may focus din for hindi lang siya stopover, destination din siya. So, we came up with a solution na ganito, no? medyo attractive siya. Sa sa loob, it's something na pupuntahan mo talaga at medyo eye candy siya. Hindi pa ganun kalakas yung IG nun, pero we understood na kailangan kapag mag-a-attract ka ng mga tao to stay in a service station, dapat maraming 
um, activity sa loob. So dito pa lang, nag-start na kaming i-shape din yung design brief. Hindi lang kami umaasa sa brief na binigay ng clients. Sineshape din namin siya kung ano yung potential pa ng site and ng project. Tapos, ito uli, concept lang to and feasibility study. Um, site development plan ng isang potential resort sa Pagod Food. So, ito, mga ano lang to. Uh, mabilisan, one to two weeks lang to na studies. So, ito yung output namin. And ito yung tinry event anong may-ari sa mga potential investors. Sadly, hindi siya natuloy. Kasi umabot ng 1 billion yung gagastasin for this. And ito, isa naman, uh, study uli ng simbahan and columbarium sa binangonan ng Rizal. So, more or less, puro ganun yung projects namin. <laughs> Mga hindi talaga legit na architectural projects at karamihan hindi natupad, hindi naging solid. no. So, nag-planning nag, nag kami after two years. Sabi namin, ano ba ginagawa nating mali? Bakit? ganun lang lagi yung mga projects na nakukuha natin. So, siguro dapat baguhin natin yung value proposition natin. So, noong two to four years, ito na yung ano namin, ito na yung bentahe namin ngayon no, sa mga kliyente. We, we, we are fast and we are good. So, bakit yun yung sinabi namin? Um, ang naging approach namin during those times is business to business na approach namin. Hindi na diretso sa client. Diretso na sa mga corporation at sa mga gatekeepers ng corporation. So, we started being aggressive sa marketing. We started giving portfolio sa mga project managers, sa mga account handlers ng bawat malalaking company. No? Tapos, nag-focus kami on efficiency. Since business na yung nilalapitan namin, so kayo ngayon, mga young architects, no? kapag business ang kausap nyo, ang malaking factor dyan is time. Kailangan mabilis kayo kasi everyday na nawawala sa kanila is everyday na nawawala rin sa profit nila. Lalo na kapag nag-handle kayo ng mga projects inside malls. So, yun. So, isa sa mga nakuha namin projects dito is sa uh, subdivision ng Mega Wide sa ano to, sa Nose Del Monte. So, ito milestone project to sa amin kasi may kalabon kaming established na architect dito and we were able to win this one. No? Kaso ang problem dito, hindi natuloy na naman dahil agricultural yung land. So, this one naman, in Bataan, ito, nagbunga na itong project na to galing to sa Facebook. Um, when the client daw started to search for an architect, tinipe niya, Young Dynamic Architect Manila. Tapos kami ro yung first na lumabas sa Google search. Kaya may message niya kami sa, <laughs> may message niya kami sa Facebook. So, ayun, siguro itong project na to malaki to eh, pero ito yung pinapakita na Alam niyo, yung social media talaga, napakalakas eh. Like ng ginagawa ng foundry ngayon. Talagang yung yung environment natin, nag, nag-rely na sa screens eh. So, as yung architects, you, you may want to take advantage of that. Uh, so, yun. Next, ito naman. Hotel naman ito sa... Yun din, yung may-aring yun na naghanap ng young architects. So, mga 50 plus rooms to, no? Na isang hotel sa Bicol. So, yun. Again, mga bahay constant stream siya ng mga residential projects kasi nga visible na kami sa social media. So, ayun, tuloy-tuloy siya. So, after four years naman, na, na medyo na-frustrate naman kami kasi but yung mga projects natin parang pag tinitingnan ko, tinatabi ko siya sa mga peers natin or sa mga tinitingala naming architects. May something kulang eh. Hindi siya, hindi siya levels ng mga yun eh. Parang ganun. So, Ano kaya ang kulang? but hindi namin magawa yung ganong atake, ganong trabaho? So, nag-ano kami uli? Nag, Nag-meeting kami uli partners. So, ngayon, um, four years to present, ito na yung value proposition namin. So, our value proposition is, we are experts and we are accessible. Ang, ang ibig sabihin namin na experts dito is, we are focusing on our strengths. So, napansin namin sa first four years namin, magaling kami gumawa ng mga food and beverages na mga project ng no, FNB. One kasi mabilis kami and also meron ako background before kami ni Andrew sa mga space planning and sa mga restaurant no. So sabi namin doon kami magfo-focus. So nanligaw kami sa mga established na groups ng food and beverages and luckily nakaland kami ng 
isang malaki-laki no, na grupo and most of the restaurants sa amin binabato. Tapos, uh, we are accessible. Dito naman namin na-discover yung yung vision namin na gusto namin lahat makakuha ng good design from an architect. Hindi tayo dapat makita as an elite service, parang elitista, na mayayaman lang yung may kaya lang yung kayang kumuha ng architects. No? So, meron din kami, thirdly, we qualify projects. So, kahit accessible kami, namimili din kami ng projects na may respeto din sa architects. So, we, we, we try to um, iniiwasan namin yung mga clients na nagpapa-blueprint lang. Alam mo yun yung mga ganun. So, sorry, hindi na namin sila inaano. So, ito yung naiba sa approach namin. No? Itong project na to is well, we, done this, uh, we did this uh, design workshop for a World Bex uh, booth which is in Davis. We went the whole nine yards talaga in terms of workshop. No, We had scale models. We had design thinking exercises. We had dig digital whiteboards. Lahat na naman maisip mo, kulang na lang role playing. Eh. Pero we did that and ito yung naging result niya. And this is the first time that we realized na in order to really step up our design in our game, we really have to step up our process. So this uh, fourth year to the present, yung focus namin is not just on the finished product, but more on the process kung paano kami nag-come up nun. Napansin namin na pag nag-focus kami sa process, mas maganda yung results na lumalabas sa project. And this booth won actually the best booth nung World Bex na yan. Kaya medyo proud kami sa naging output. So next, also para mag-upgrade yung design namin, we started to join competitions. So this one is uh, a competition for yung temporary shelters for the Rohingya um, refugees. No? So we teamed up with an industrial designer and we came up with the design na napakaliit lang, madali siyang ipak, madali siyang i-distribute, tapos matibay siya at comfortable. So yun. Next, ito naman is yung sa safari, yung in-invite kami ng blueprint to give a design sa Design Better book nila. So, this one, kasi malapit sa amin to, pinatayo yung skyway, nakikita namin sa condo unit. And na napapansin namin, meron doon mga housing projects along Osmeña Highway. If you notice them, yung mga bahay na nasa tabi ng riles. And narealize namin, kapag natapos tong skyway project na to, ito yung pinaka magsasuffer ng mga tao doon. So, how can we design this better? Kasi hindi option na papaalisin mo na naman sila at itatapon mo sa kabuyaw. I think hindi magandang ano yun, no? So, tinanong namin sarili namin, can we make a better house for them na hindi sila ina -approved? So, ito yung parang naging study namin. No? So, in between the houses kasi, if you can see, nag-introduce kami ng parang bay in between them na yun yung... Uh, naging common areas and nagbibigay ng ventilation, clean air sa kanila. No? Um, just by the book, mas makita na yung graphics doon. Uh, I think out pa yun, no? So, ito siya. Parang intervention siya sa building. Paano siya mas maging livable. So, ayan. So, medyo fun itong project na ito. Ayan, sa loob, no? So, very, very Pinoy. Again, uh, isa pang competition naman yung Freedom Memorial Museum which nasama kami sa top 20 pero unfortunately hindi kami yung naging winner. No? So ito rin, magandang ano rin to sa amin, exercise. Tapos, ayun, ito yung mga restaurants from uh, Bistol Group naman no, na nakuha namin. So ito yung chance namin to experiment sa interiors na hindi mo typically nakikita. And dito kami medyo lumakas yung social media following kasi I can di talaga yung mga projects na to. So just to end no, but ko ba sinasabi yung process namin na yon no? Ang manifesto namin is good design above all else. Hindi pwedeng pwede na, laging ganoon no. Pag lalo na yung partner ko si Andrew pag nagche-check ng drawings talaga yan, napaka ano niya, napaka detalyado, napaka nagninitpick talaga siya na makikita niya. And I think, lumabas yung ganong ugali naming tatlo na maganda yung kinakalabasan ng mga projects. So, kahit may compromise, 
sa design. Ang ano ko sa mga young architects ngayon is laging good design above all else. Your architecture must serve the brief and give your clients enjoyment and satisfaction. No? Tapos, architecture for all. Yan ang mission namin. And we are not in the building business. We are in the building business. Ang ibig sabihin ko dito, uh, building business sa una is the noun. Hindi yun yung business talaga natin. Not the finished structure. No? Ang business talaga namin na headroom is the building part, which is yung process, which is yung verb. Um, doon kasi nakikita ng clients yung value natin as architects, eh? not just dyan sa finished product. And I agree with Sangay na the manifested architecture is a product of, is an amalgamation of many efforts. Hindi lang kay architect, kay contractor din yan, kay client din yan, kay workers din yan. So, that building is not really what your office is about, but the act of building itself, yung process, yun yung firm ninyo in the future. Yun yung magiging practice ninyo. And lastly, evolve or die. So makikita nyo sa first one to six years namin, yung value proposition namin pa iba-iba. Kasi we, are, we want to constantly um, improve. So, kapag naging medyo ano ka na, uh, contento, talagang wala, ma 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 mauunahan ka ng lahat. No? So, you always have to have that desire to be better. So, yun. What are we up during the pandemic? Uh, plantitos and plantita. <laughs> Bilis ang bilin na halaman. Um, we invested in marketing. So, meron kaming marketing plan sa Facebook, Instagram. Next, uh, nag-aaral kami. Sumasali kami sa mga ganito. Nanonood kami lagi sa Foundry. No? Maganda yung mga talks dito. Eh. So, isa to sa mga source namin ng education. No? And we are cultivating relationships. So, maraming projects kasi na na-stop. Marami kami clients sa food and beverage industry at na-stop yung mga projects nila. Pero, pinaparamdam namin na kahit nag-stop yung projects nyo sa amin, we are still your architects. So, kung meron kayong kailangan na we might be able to help, pwedeng pwedeng lumapit sa amin. So, habang walang project, alam mo, parang damo lang nandiyan ka. Parang yun yung ginagawa namin, ano ngayon, pinagkakaabalahan namin. So, yun lang. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope may nakuha kayo sa presentation namin. Thank you so much, Kevin. Welcome. Thank you, Headroom. Thank you, Headroom. Thank you, Kevin. Plant Papa Gerard. <laughs> What can you say? <laughs> Oo nga eh. Ano yun? Nakarelate agad ako dun eh. No? Yung during the pandemic. <laughs> Bili ng halaman. <laughs> anyway, so thank you so much, Kevin, for a very wonderful presentation. What I uh, learned from your presentation is yung, yung focus on the process. Parang, ano yun, no? From, uh, the, the, yung evaluating your, evaluating your value proposition every two years. Parang, Parang, parang katulad din ng bamboo, di ba? Parang kailangan may node muna siya bago siya mag-shoot up ulit. So parang yung the, the importance of having that uh, evaluation period, ano, parang parang kailangan muna niyang mapatibay yun before ka um, ano ulit, no, mag-grow ka ulit. And I really uh, appreciate you sharing that. And ano, yun nga, sabi mo nga, uh, you can step up your game no, by focusing on the process. So thank you so much for sharing that, Kevin. How about you, Angel? Okay. Um, taking off from where, uh, where uh, Jared touched on uh, with Headroom Suspraso, no, no. Um, uh, I appreciate that uh, they were very persistent they weren't initially where they wanted to be, but mm -hmm. they knew who they were. They knew what they were capable of, so they were persistent. They knew where they wanted to go. They weren't there yet, so they were humble enough to go back and sit down and look at what the circumstances were. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very helpful for young and aspiring architects uh, to, to know these things on how you set up uh, your practice, how, how you how you build yourself up to eventually be an established firm, an established name. So it's nice for Headroom to take us through that journey. They were very persevering. 
And like what Gerard said, they focused on process, process, process. Um, they also mentioned something about uh, evolving, evolve or die. And this was something which was very relevant to our discussion two sparks ago. <laughs> that the, yeah. the practice itself, the architecture profession, or any profession for that matter, right? I, yes. the thing that's constant is change. So you have to evolve or die like the dinosaurs. <laughs> they pass <laughs> on dinosaurs. Huh? Anyway, and then lastly, I like how they started the firm investing on uh, knowing their relationships. They were friends from college and uh, how they're moving the firm forward is also investing on relationships. Uh, not just you, uh, looking at clients as investments, but looking at them as uh, relationships that they need to maintain, whether or not it, there's a project to, to start with. So uh, I like that, uh, that, that uh, proposition that they, they put forward. You know, so it's, again, about relationships, 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 and process, of course. <laughs> Builder and Developer Incorporated. Construction Innovation Partner. Fueled by a never-ending passion for quality and innovation, while others kept to 3.5 meter high sliding doors, Kenneth and Mark pushes the limit to 3.8 meters without compromising its integrity. Our on-site visitation guarantee makes Kenneth and Mark the prime example of a modern holistic business approach.
Across five continents and more than 75 countries, Vespo, a famous global brand name in PPR and other piping systems, provides every home with quality thermoplastic piping solutions that has your health and environment in mind. Manufactured with state-of-the-art technology, approved and certified by water authorities and testing bodies all over the world. When quality is required, Vespo gives the assurance you need. Use Vespo PPR. Vespo. Life flows. Are you someone who treats your home as a masterpiece? Come join me as I give you a peek into finishing and furnishing pieces that are works of art. Pieces that have actual stories to tell. I am Grant Lim and this is Home Studio. And speaking of generations, Gerard, earlier we've heard from, um, from former students, we've heard from uh, a barcada setting up a firm. So naman, former, uh, former staff of our, uh, our co-presenters for, uh, for this afternoon. No? So talagang ano, new practices it's not uh it's not the field of the the old guards anymore uh it's it's really laying the groundwork for the new generation to step in and uh parang infuse young blood a uh, fresh spirit uh sabi nga nung value proposition ng headroom di ba we are we are talented we are uh, experts we're affordable na <laughs> Uh, no, eventually they changed it. So, uh, on that note, let me introduce our third uh, firm for this uh, for this Parks Babo. Um, architect Jaime Recto is one half of the young duo behind Tayo Architecture and Design. He graduated in 2015 from the University of Santo Tomas and garnered seventh place in the 2017 January Architecture Licensure Exams. His work experience in Buen Salido Architects brought about his influences in the local patronage and residential architecture. Together with his partner, architect Margarita Barcia, they started their firm called Tayo Architecture and Design in 2018. The word Tayo in Filipino means, oh, the word Tayo in Filipino means us and to stand, Tayo. As represented by the name, the firm advocates proper design values and collaborative processes. In every project that they do, they strive for responsible, positive, and user-oriented architecture. So everyone, uh, I turn over the floor now to Tayo Architecture, Jaime Recto. Take it away, Jaime. Hi, everyone. Let me just share my screen. <clears throat> Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm architect Jaime Recto, a partner here at Tayo Architecture and Design. Tayo is an architecture and interior design studio that focuses on bespoke spaces, uh, designed in a collaborative process with an inclination to local patronage. We involve all members of the team in the design process and in any way we can, we advocate Filipino values and our local suppliers. Uh, thank you guys again, once again, for, for allowing me to share a little bit about what we do in the firm. Thank you, or special shout out to architect Nikki, Jason, and Enz for inviting me to speak. It's, a, it's truly an honor. Uh, this course is my way of learning something new and getting that dose of inspiration we all need, especially in this time of uncertainty. So even though the, I'm the one speaking, I feel like I'm the one who's getting more inspired. That's how I work. <laughs> uh, Tayo started out as a sideline business while me and my partner were employed in separate architecture firms. I trained under Buen Salido Architects, to which I attribute most of my learnings 
and my experience. My partner, Maita, on the other hand, worked with IDEA, and from which her perspective of the practice just broadened, further having worked in large-scale developments and international design competitions. So generally, our dynamic is I'm the sort of aloof one when it comes to design, while Maita is the one who sort of grounds me and grounds the practice in the business side. Being typical millennials, uh, we believe that hustling, hustling early on in our careers and just sort of being a sponge to, to any opportunity would give us that first foot in the door to later establish our own design firm. It was always our dream to have our own practice because we felt like whatever it may be, we had an edge to offer. And you had to have that sort of confidence from the very beginning uh, when you're in such a competitive industry. Fast forward, we've been up and running officially as a small design firm for almost two years now. Things are more or less stable. We're able to keep the office running. Uh, yet, I feel like our identity is something that we have yet to fully establish. We are, we are a startup among other startups. Uh, this is a screenshot of my cell phone when I typed these keywords on Instagram. Studio design architecture. And obviously, we're, we're surrounded by so many talented firms, so, so many talented practices that we look up to and we get inspired from. We are proud to be hustling along, the, the, along these other firms. Our, our edge, and I'm sure it's similar to others, is the hard work and our drive to learn. There are about 2,000 new architects every year in the Philippines, but it works because we're in this sort of build, build, buy, buy system where real estate and construction are booming. We're the ones who take on a lot of condo unit renovations, commercial interiors, uh, and houses, residential projects. But no matter how small the project is, I believe there's an opportunity to create something unique and reflective of our design values. We also believe that there's an opportunity to create something, to take advantage um, of globalization, where the country is just so much more exposed to all these trends, social media, collaboration, collaborative processes, and they're generally more open-minded people when it comes to design. But, you know, we drift from idea to idea. We're never really content about one thing. We seek for something better, and we're constantly on the, in the process of self-discovery. So very millennial. Nonetheless, uh, competition will forever be dense, and it is totally up to us uh, to determine how we will set ourselves apart. So this is one of the earlier photos of our office. Really, uh, startup mentality, we needed a place to work. We uh, rented a space, we put some desk, and uh, from then on, we never looked back. We treat each project as, again, another opportunity to learn more about ourselves and the way we do things in the hopes of getting closer to really truly knowing what we can offer as a design firm. So I wouldn't say that we have our agenda or identity intact, but what I'm going to share with you today is what we're doing to figure that out or to get closer to figuring that out. So there are five values we always try to check off our list internally when we go about each project. Uh, we try to tick some boxes in the processes and the research that we do to make sure that we learn more about ourselves and hopefully just get a little bit closer to, you know, establishing our own architectural identity. The first is service. The first value is our service to our clients. This is the first and most important parts of the design process. This is where we have to take a step back and really try to place ourselves in the eyes of our clients. It's removing our biases to be objective about their preferences and ultimately be able to recommend sensible solutions for their requirements. Our first several projects uh, were for family and friends, as we assure them that 
we can execute the trendy, industrial, and rustic styles. We took pride in being fresh and passionate and in, a, in what we do. We took pride in, in staying up uh, after work hours and, after, and, and until the mornings. But on hindsight, we, really, we realized that we weren't doing anything unique. At the end of the day, architecture is a service profession. We are constantly trying to improve our listening skills, communication skills, and most importantly, discarte. Or those extras to, 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 we give to the client to push the right buttons, to push the right buttons. We always try to strike that intersection of client requirements, design integrity, and contextual solutions. This was our first from ground up project. It's very close to our, our hearts. Uh, it's a 450 square meter residence. So one example of you know, balancing these client requirements, this, this, this service that, that I call, um, we do a lot of the cocoa milk tea branches. Uh, at the start, I'm not showing those photos because uh, the client really just wanted us to execute certain styles. You know, uh, we were very limited by, you know, he wanted to see wood slats and the typical things that, that the client has. And we understand because at the end of the day, it's a, it's a brand. We have to follow their guidelines. But after we uh, delivered our first project to them and they understood that, you know, we could push things a little bit further, we, he, he basically gave us free reign, uh, coming from a conservative businessman. And what's, what's even more proud to us is that we were able to sort of localize this Taiwanese milk tea brand. Uh, in a lot of other projects, we use a lot of local supplied lamps as their accent pieces, local supplied furniture. And in this one, this is Coco Mall of Asia. We used machuca tiles, uh, plain gray machuca tiles as a uh, wall finish. I really believe that uh, it must be a perfect match when it comes to client and architect values. And we're lucky to get clients who are really cool and have great ideas off the bat. Uh, this is one of our earlier residences and we're happy that it's about to groundbreak soon. Uh, the client wanted that dream corner lot home with a lot of glass uh, so that he could have a, a big tree inside his double height living room. So very, very typical that you'd hear a, a Filipino aspire to have something like that. But little did he understand that his property was actually southwest facing. And the living room would be the living room would be located on the hottest portion of the lot. As a solution, the, uh, amidst these limitations, we recommended low panoramic windows uh, that, were, that, that were shaded by a cantilevered mass. And this was complemented by two high deep set portal windows that are meant to provide ambient light to the interiors as well as direct light to the large interior uh, indoor plant, the one you see behind the stairs. This was um, another project with, uh, with one of our really cool clients. I'm not sure if it's... Yeah, there. Uh, this, is a, this, is, this is owned by a single lady who wanted a compact home that emphasized her own space. Uh, she's actually a, a small-time developer. She, was, she understood construction materials. She, she was proud that, of the quality of work that she could do and she could deliver. And she wanted her own space uh, to emphasize just as much as the outdoors. So this master suite, the corner on the second floor with a curved window, actually overlooks an open garden that would be used for uh, gatherings and parties. While the volume underneath becomes a, another place for alfresco parties and, and for her personal yoga practice. This next project on the other hand, uh, these are the, the projects that are very fun for us because the client off the bat just straight out told us, architect, we want to be inspired by sea urchins because Sea urchins are prevalent in the cove of where this house will be. Uh, so he asked us to play with stars, star shapes, pointy shapes. And, you know, we got a little bit nervous, but after all things considered, 
such as cost, maintenance among the few, we ended up with a subtle textured exposed urchin shell aggregate concrete wall. But yeah, that's that concrete wall. This was our other scheme, and this is how it, the, the approved scheme was rendered. So this is an exciting uh, project for us because it would require a little bit of sampling. Sampling mock-ups are always exciting because you see it come to life before it's actually built. And with this, it's impressive in its own right, especially when highlighted by proper lighting. We're very, very conscious about how, how we serve our, our, our clients. And, you know, it's not really just about following what they want. It's, it's our, our, all, our, our dilemma is always how do we preserve design integrity? The second value is collaboration. Internally, we start off each project with a brainstorming session. The project architect leads us with a brief. There are no rules. People just get to say whatever they have in mind. We take pride in the weird, the contradictory, because who knows what can come out of, from that. Me and my partner later actually found out that one of our strengths was in our design debates, because we usually came out with a better design solution after. Uh, to the point, sometimes nag away. There's a real disagreement. But then once we really sat back, looked at those elements, it, it came together well. Sometimes we do individual on-the-spot esquises, uh, and then later on we present it to each other, and we take bits and pieces of, of those, and they're able to make sense of it as a whole. As we progress with the project, uh, we have regular design discussions with the team to see how we can improve. And in many cases, it's actually to subtract. We often find ourselves over-designing and later struggling to exercise restraint in our designs. Architecture is also naturally a team effort. We do the design, but our contractors, our subcontractors, our furniture manufacturers, lighting suppliers do the execution. We make it, we make it a point to, in, to involve contacts who provide quality work and who are professional in their dealings. And that's something that we, heard, we had to learn from the hard way. In as much as we would like to support uh, si Manu Foreman and everything, uh, we made it a point to really follow practices because we're dealing with, with liabilities here, possible construction failures, and it, it has become integral in our process to, to really support professional practices. And that's why we started to, you know, to establish our own firm. We wanted to promote that professional practice that we, we do so in, in our studies and everything. Um, we are naturally attracted to working with people who are like us, local, starting out, and uh, they feel like they have something to prove. We know that we can't do it ourselves. And now more than ever, we have to be more diligent with our coordination as everything happens over Zoom. And it's a, it's a struggle on its own. Uh, and we, it's, it's a practice and it's a trade on its own to just check plans, to check engineering drawings over online meetings. So I believe collaboration is an innate value for a lot of young firms right now. Gone are the days that tricks of the trade are secrets. And I'm happy to have peers and mentors to approach when we need supplier referrals or even business advice. Lastly, we see ourselves, we see our clients as our number one collaborators. Most of our clients are private individuals, so we get to be more intimate with them when learning about their lifestyle and behavioral patterns. We go through an in extensive interview process. When it's possible, we even try to visit their homes, have lunch with them, have dinner with them, to really learn about what they like, how they do things. And ultimately, without our clients, our, our designs are meaningless. The fourth and fifth, maybe, uh, value is contextualism and accessibility. I think these two go hand in hand with each other. Contextual architecture, I'm sure you guys know this, everyone here is a student or an architect, uh, but basically, it's a process where a structure is designed in response to its specific 
environment. Rather than being a style, it's seen as a set of values to incorporate not only the immediate but the wider context of a building to its design. So it's a, it gives meaning to the parts of a building. So why is there glass here? Why is, there, why is it enclosed in this part? Why is there a column here? Why, why is there an open space here? It gives, contextualism is the meaning for those parts. And usual considerations for these solutions include sun and wind paths, presence of natural characteristics among the few. Uh, even cultural appreciation and familiarity, that's also a big part. Is why would you design something that people will not understand or appreciate just because it's so different or it's so out of context? So all of which we feel are innate to any project and we believe that adapting to a site should be parallel to being responsive to, responsive to any client requirement. So it's as equal to each other. We also believe that good architecture is for all people, uh, but at the same time, we know how to construct. Uh, we know how that construction costs can simply blow up here in the country. We take pride in being able to design meaningful spaces at a budget, and I guess this is reflective of the pattern of the kinds of clients we usually serve. Uh, we currently have four residential projects that are that have the same client profile nagkataon lang uh, and we're glad to be able to assist them in the same sort of process all of them are startup families with one to three kids uh, either toddlers or newborns all of them are actually taking out loans to build their houses so it's interesting um, they're not very wealthy. They don't have the extra money. They have the money to pay for our services, thankfully. But then, you know, we appreciate that, that sort of foresight that they have in life. Um, and we all the more appreciate that they're willing to invest in us for their future. Accessibility of a project is just as important as site context. We may design something sustainable and tropical, but if it's not proportionate to the client's capabilities, then we've considered the project unsuccessful. This is one of their residences. It's a 375-square-meter, uh, uh, 2.5-story residence in Susana Heights. The fourth is design innovation. A lot of fir firms found their success in focusing on a certain specialization. This is something we hope to somehow get into the future, perhaps maybe through a master's program. There are a lot of non-traditional specializations such as material technology, social design, responsible architecture that are, are very relevant in today's time. Uh, we're happy to say that we're, we're actually working towards div diversifying our practice with our very own architect, uh, Maita, who is currently uh, taking up her master's in architecture uh, with a track in management in the built environment in Technical University of Delft in Netherlands. So she's in her second year uh, and she's starting her thesis, which is about expanding business opportunities for architects. And their main goal is really to, to take advantage of the, all the, the skill set that we already have the curriculums that we've already learned from our school, the learnings and experience that we've had in our practice in the Philippines, and figure out what else we can offer as architects, uh, aside from project management, design, and construction. So it's the first time I've heard about terms such as corporate real estate management. And a lot of, a lot of, a lot of countries in Europe, uh, they, they really believe that this is the next uh, wave of sort of or, or tier in project management, architect, engineer, in the, the whole construction process. So it's a very exciting uh, phase for us also. Uh, at this time, you know, in innovation can be very expensive. Uh, so we settle for the opportunities that we have. And we believe that innovation does not have to be sophisticated. Uh, it's, for us, it's really about trying something new 
or doing something that we haven't done before. Uh, this is where research, more research comes in, whether it's a material that we haven't used before or a methodology of installation that we have to experiment with or a technology that makes our clients' life easier. We see it as a small victory in innovation for us. So just a closer look on some of our innovations. So this one, natutuwa uh, kami kasi uh, we have to figure out how to construct this solihia pattern design. Uh, gate design. The client wanted to enter his home into the outdoors. Uh, he's very in touch with Filipino values. He, the, the concept for this project is actually illuminating nostalgia because he wants to be reminded of his Lola's house, his parents' house. Uh, uh, the way he, he experienced those houses as a kid, he wants his kids to experience them the same way. So uh, on our end, uh, we ask ourselves, do we laser cut? Do we weave wrought iron? Should the scale be in, uh, increased? So it's going to be an exciting prototyping process when the time comes. It can be as simple as this uh, curved, curved glass block wall. This is something we haven't done before. It looks easy in theory, but uh, as of now, this project is in foundations. So naglalatag sila ng, ng retaining wall for the curved, the curved uh, wall sa lower ground floor. And from the back pa lang, it requires so much precision. So how do we, how does that, how does, how, how does our drawings translate into actual? That's what always we ask ourselves. How do we make it easy for our, for our contractor to understand? Another project that we have ongoing now, this is also actually a project that the client profile is the same, uh, young family. Uh, we incorporated wind and light scoops to allow natural light and ventilation in the interiors. So similar to the, the project I presented earlier, the, the left mass is actually um, southwest facing also. So we need to, to solve it in such a way. So similar, we have some panoramic windows under, but we incorporated this wind and light scoop. So on our end, what materials do we use to maximize ambient light? I have a feeling I might have to change the black color or I might have to use a semi-gloss finish, for example. That would maximize nat natural light and as well not maximize the velocity of the wind that enters the space. So this is another shot of the, the house. Not loading. There. So the last, uh, and definitely not the least, is Filipino design. Um, this is something that just resonates with us. And we feel that it's almost our responsibility to advocate Filipino design because it's just not celebrated as it should be. Until now, we see Arc de Triomphs in Flanders <laughs> and uh, Grand Canals uh, in McKinley being built. Uh, but we're lucky we live in a time where Filipino craftsmanship and ingenuity are coming back to style. There are tons of local furniture suppliers. Uh, na uso yung, yung vintage hunting, yung mine, mine, sold, sold on Instagram, which is a very exciting you know, engagement online. Uh, food and art fairs are, are abundant. And at the end of the day, they all contribute to this advocacy. As said by my former boss, architect Jason Buenzalido, Claiming our identity leads to authenticity and readiness to converse with the rest of the world. So we take pride in at least trying to create Filipino architecture. And we are inspired by the works of our peers and our mentors. Uh, at the end of the day, it must be tropical. Will it be easy to maintain with our harsh rains and dust? Will it be will it be easy to cool during the summer, or will it need where will it need to be air conditioned all the time? We promote personalization in terms of design, wherein we give our clients opportunity to give their own personal touch to the space. Uh, we we sometimes get feedback that the space looks very plain, but 
we automatically rebut by saying that the design is meant to grow as you grow with the space. So feel free to display decor, memorabilia from your travels, because at the end of the day, these are what will make the space feel like a home. And we really believe that. We don't believe in over-designing because 10 years down the line, it's going to be totally yours. Hindi na sa amin yan. Uh, we'd like to believe that architecture is positive, inviting, accessible, and not intimidating. We try to encourage interaction, welcome pops of color, and quirky ways of experiencing our spaces. We Filipinos have this, this habit of trying out things that don't usually go together, but end up making sense. And this has been a guiding principle in our idea formation from the very start. We try to achieve that very Lola reaction of entering a space and, and, just, say, and just having to say, wow, ang aliwalas. Uh, we love bright and airy spaces. We love contrasts that, that give surprise to a, uh, an interior space. Uh, and we love incorporating warm and familiar materials because all these add to the hominess and familiarity and acceptance and accessibility of a space. So just to conclude, you know, these, these may all sound very flowery and idealistic. And don't get us wrong, we, we often get trapped in our love to just drawing and, and, and producing something, quote-unquote, aesthetic. But we're if we're able to check these boxes in the work we do, uh, we've considered the project successful in its own right. Aside from this, we're constantly working towards getting closer to knowing what we can truly offer in this competitive field of architecture. If it's, is it going to be designed the next two years? I don't know. Is it going to be project management? Who knows? Are we going to be CAD outsourced operators in the future for European countries? We don't know, but we keep our minds open. At the end of the day, it's evolve or die, as, as architect Kevin said. Uh, I can honestly say we're far from that. Our thoughts are all over the place. We have our fair share of doubts and mistakes but we're trying and we keep our minds open and i think organically our architectural identity or agenda will able will be able to establish itself uh, this is what drives us how we go about our projects how we treat our clients how we see our business and our future so now i bounce back the question to to the students mostly the students you guys are about to enter the professional life so in school, they always ask us, what is your philosophy or theory? Some, to be honest, I can't answer that right now. Sometimes it's okay not to have a philosophy or theory yet. Sometimes it may even be a limitation. I think the better question is, uh, what are your guiding principles or values? And naturally, if you're able to think about those, stay true to those, you're being true to yourself, and you'd be able to figure out, for example, what kind of firm you'd want to work for in the future. And you'd be able to figure out generally how you envision yourself to be in the future. So yeah, that's all. Thank you once again for allowing me to share what we do with you. We truly appreciate it. Design tayo. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gerard. <laughs> Hello. So I liked how Jaime talked about uh, balance as they were starting out the firm. Like uh, he was the aloof one, uh, Margarita was the more uh, grounded one, and how they they didn't try to reinvent the wheel, but rather they took best practices from their mentors, and then they 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 sprung from that uh, in order to move forward. My takeaway is um, they, they said they were hustling, but it's, uh, if, if, you, if you listen through their presentation, it wasn't about the, the hustle at Lange. Uh, it's, it's more of uh, they were <clears throat> very patient in 
hustling but not in a hurry na may hinog sa pilit that the fruition comes at the right time so the projects the the the, the design manifests itself at the right time hindi kailangan pilitin hindi kailangan ipos so how about you Gerard yeah so uh, my <laughs> my takeaway uh for the presentation of Jaime was uh, So I I really appreciate yung ano yung yung process of uh they go to, they go through the sampling of the materials tapos they share that they have this long critique session no nagaaway pa over a design no a design solution and also they are open for exploration and collaboration with other professionals so I think all of these things no that they do um uh, the the heart and core of it is ano their value no yung value nila of ano eh, parang they they put in more importance on uh, being able to respond no to the needs of their clients to respond to the to the project brief no and the program parang not only the physical aspect of it but i also recognize that they that they also re, that, that that they also take into consideration yung psychological or the emotional needs of their clients para nung sinabi ni Jaime kanina yung parang may clients sila na oh para maalala niya yung yung kabataan nila no and then it is translated into into an architectural feature no so uh, at the core of it is being responsive to the needs of the client so thank you so much Jaime I've learned a lot thank you thank you, thank you Jaime so so far uh, we've had uh, new practices telling us about specializing knowing focusing your efforts towards uh, uh, specialization Uh, we've had uh, practitioners telling us about the importance of process and perseverance, and we've also had practitioners, uh, new practitioners, telling us about patience and what uh, they just mentioned. Sabi ni uh, Margarita Barsha, uh, the partner of Jaime, scientific hustle, not yeah. just hustling. Scientific right? hustle. Right. So the, again, um, moral support from the distance, Jaime. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so our next, our last but definitely not the least presenter for this afternoon's Sparks and uh, and Babel Hostel, so let's say him, would be uh, Tag Architecture. Tag Ar- yeah. Architecture was formed in April 2017 by two partners, Raisa and Rainier, both practicing architects. Raisa received her degree from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. And Rainier graduated from the University of Santo Tomas. Before taking the boards, Raisa was under the tutelage of uh, architect Migi Lim Genko and went on to work with Cosculoela Architects after passing the exam. Rainier, on the other hand, was a nomad for a few years before landing a job in PRSP Architects right after taking his oath as an architect. Both eager to improve their hand in design, the partners decided to work in Singapore for almost half a decade experiencing foreign culture, immersing themselves in a creative and progressive environment. Armed with experience and newfound belief, the partners returned home with the aim of improving the urban landscape and hopefully laying the groundwork for future practitioners. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tag Architecture, Rainier Tiletile. Take it away, Rainier. Hi, good afternoon, guys. Yeah, I've been having technical difficulties with this uh, camera. Ko. I'm so sorry. Anyway, yeah, as mentioned, um, we're very, I mean, the, the, the firm, I, before I start, no, I, I'd like to thank again uh, people behind Foundry and also uh, uh, Pabo and other uh, entities responsible for today's event. Um, yeah, so... Anyway, as mentioned, our firm is, our, our small studio actually started uh, back in 2017. Um, but before that, two years prior, um, me and Raisa had another studio with two of our close friends. But, you know, two years on, Shempre, uh, your, your plans doesn't go uh, as you wished. But it was a, a common decision by the group to Uh, part ways na lang. So that's when TAG started. Uh, 2017, um, it was just me and Raisa. Uh, 
may mga projects na rin kami before, but uh, very small ones now. So, again, we didn't have time to actually think of a name. <laughs> so, tag, uh, yun lang. We just uh, uh, stayed with us na lang. Pero uh, this year, uh, since we, we've been working from home, uh, we had a lot of time on our hands to come up with a new brand. Hopefully by January, bago na yung name namin. Um, yeah, so it's a small studio, uh, Studio 6, uh, me, Raisa, and two other architects, uh, Marvin and Mark. And we have two graduates, uh, Joshua and Angel. Um, Siguro, I'll, I'll just show you. I mean, most of the points already been touched upon by uh, our fellow architects, no? Kevin and uh, Jaime. And the presentation of uh, Sangai is very impressive. Ang galing. Uh, hats off to you guys. Uh, just, just continue your, uh, no, the, uh, your vision. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Kevin said actually earlier about the struggles of starting a firm. We, we went through the same. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure uh, yung mga aspiring architects uh, planning to uh, start their own studio, siguro just be ready na lang din. Uh, lahat tayo, ganun, dumadan sa ganun. Um, since, you know, I, I didn't really prepare uh, presentation today, but siguro I'll just share na lang our experiences, me and Raisa. Um, as mentioned yeah, before we started the firm, uh, we went to Singapore and worked for almost half a decade. Uh, the reason why, kasi parang we wanted to be uh, exposed in a different culture. Uh, we wanted to learn how other people think overseas. So I we've, we've worked with uh, Malaysians, uh, Indonesians, Americans actually, uh, tapos may Germans then, uh, Italians and Argentinians, to name a few. So very, you know, uh, th there's a melting pot talaga of culture and it's, it's you know, an eye opener for us. And then uh, we, nung nandun kami, we worked with, uh, an architectural firm named Park Associates. Siguro kilala niyo sila. They've been uh, featured in Blueprint for a few ano na, uh, issues. Um, we, so Minrise has stayed there for, I think, more than a year. Uh, we've, we've learned a lot. Um, and to tell you honestly, yung mga desi designers nila were uh, Thais and Indonesians. So, I realized parang batang gagaling nila. <laughs> so, you know, we, we tried to uh, absorb whatever we can when we were working with them. Uh, so, yun, siguro it, it's a big part of our, yun naging influence namin on how we approach design. Um, just to share with you some of the works we've done in Singapore. Uh, I'll just share my... Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. There you go. Yeah, can you see the image? Yeah. Okay. There, um, oh, good. Yeah, so most of their projects are residential. Uh, so it was really a good learn experience for us. Um, yung, it was parang uh, again an eye opener parang we had to actually absorb everything para when kasi it was never our intention to stay there long term uh, talagang may may uh, balak kami to start our own studio uh, coming back here uh, here so these are I think images and finished now uh, um, it's it's in Singapore um, you can see very modern, minimalist uh, approach. And just 
going to share another project. Um, yeah, here. So again, iba iba yung projects nila. There, there are new erections, and ito naman it's an old house uh, reconverted into a modern one. Nakita niyo yung kapit bahay. <laughs> So yeah, um, very straightforward, uh, very clean, modern look. So yeah, it, it's 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 the biggest influence in in how we design nowadays. Um, so yeah, before, because uh, again, Sangai architects are specializing in bamboo, diba? Right? So on on our part, naman we really are gravitating towards uh, modern uh, contemporary design, and and one of the uh, points that I was asked to share today is yung ay yung, yung design inspirations. Um, siguro another project that's close to my heart is uh, is this one. Uh, is the ano, Barcelona Pavilion. Parang it was built in 1929 until today. Parang it's so elegant, uh, so modern. Hindi siya nawawala talaga. It's very timeless. It's it's the epitome of uh, timelessness for me. Um, yeah. So after four years, it, yeah, actually it was cut short because we had to, you know, in, for personal reasons, we had to go back. Um, so right now, if if you look at our Instagram page, most of our projects are residential projects. I'm just gonna share my yeah there. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So. Again, the, the the language that we show in 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 the feeds are uh, very modern, uh, contemporary, and we actually select only projects that we uh, post because again, we want our clients to know that this is our identity. And again, the wala kami mga projects in restaurants, mostly residential projects. Uh, there are a few that are uh, in the building permit stage, uh, um, and some, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, uh, we had to put on hold. Um, so, again, I, I won't touch on the points that our fellow architects already explained. Because it's, I think. Um, they already explained enough na. Uh, siguro it, it's for me lang, for the younger generation, I think you have to be, uh, you have to stick with your ideals. You have to know who you are as a designer and who you want to be then. Uh, and the reason why we went to Singapore is because, you know, we, we felt that our a training here in Manila was, was uh, it, it's not really lacking, but we, we wanted new challenges that would actually push us beyond what we're capable of. And ayun, uh, okay naman, uh, most of our clients are, uh, again, sabi kinina ni Headroom, uh, invest on uh, marketing. Because nowadays people are online, talaga. And fortunately enough, most of our clients are uh, engaging us. Because uh, they know that we specialize on residential houses. Um, although our firm is still uh, three years old, pa lang eh. it's a little over three years. Uh, most of our projects are hindi ka namin ma-post online talaga because uh, tinatayo pa lang. Uh, I'll just share some of the pictures. Um,
Yeah, this one. Uh, ito actually is already uh, in the building permit stage. Uh, pero you know, unfortunately, we had to revise the facade a little bit uh, because of you know, local uh, design guidelines. Uh, this is in Tagaytay, Plantation Hills. Um, the the facade was gusto talaga ng clients eh, but unfortunately, it's one of our frustrations here is there a uh, no, very uh, broad interpretation of the guidelines, design guidelines. Um, yung local architects nila uh, in house, they have a different. Uh, uh, understanding of, of their design rules. So there are a lot of uh, instances now we had to revise the facade. So on a frustrating client. Siguro, just to compare here, what we have here in our country and abroad, like in Singapore, uh, most of the projects there are land, uh, that we worked on are landed houses. Um, pero hindi sila bound by rules uh, parang dito kasi there are uh, themed gated communities. Eh. Uh, you had you have to follow them. Parang in a way it limits your creativity. So that's one of our frustrations. Uh, kasi we we admire the work of our fellow architects abroad. Pero siguro their their circumstances are different from ours. Eh. That's why they were able to uh, create wonderful, uh, beautiful houses. Um, I will just share another project then. Uh, again, because of the pandemic, it had to be moved, the timeline. So, yeah, but. Uh, as we approach, I mean, once we, because one of the uh, points that I had to touch up on is the approaches on how we practice or how we design. Um, basically, it's it's similar to uh, other architects. Um, the main thing that we really give you know, importance is empathy. You have to listen to uh, the client. Because uh, at the end of the day, they will be the ones living in it. Um, siguro tayo lang is the vessel of their vision. And we have to interpret as best as possible yung what they want. Um, and then, of course, uh, give it a certain uh, identity as a designer then. So, you know, uh, different clients have different characteristics, different uh, personalities. That's why if you look at our projects, they don't look the same. But it's not really unique in a way because I feel like there are a lot of architects out there that are already practicing the same approach. Um, so, Siguro, it's just that uh, when we approach a design problem, uh, tamay, it, it, collaboration is the key. Uh, you have to, again, uh, empathize and your ideas have to be parang, uh, honest. And there will come a time in the move for straight kayo. Uh, I'm I'm talking to the younger generation. So, uh, of course, as a designer, you always have to find the common ground. Because us being designers, we have this certain pride. Na parang hindi maganda to dapat yung gawin. No, uh, you have to uh, adjust. You have in a way na parang hindi naman totally kakalimutan your, your, your identity as the, as the designer. But again, it, it's, uh, it, it has to be a special trait uh, for us now. We have to uh, approach problems 
in different angles. So, yeah, I'm just sharing the the designs that we have. Uh, ito, it was the first option. Eh. It wasn't really approved by it. although the client liked the design. But again, you know, we, we had to find the common ground and we had to redo the, the design because uh, for them it's too modern. It's too, uh, parang nasobrahan, kumbaga. Um, yeah, you can see talaga, if you're coming up the ranks, you get uh, to uh, experience other people, you get uh, inspiration from them. Um, siguro sa akin, when I was uh, working in Singapore, there are only a few people that I really looked up to. Uh, one was uh, Christina Fan in Park Associates. Uh, there was this one phrase that he said, uh, did, that she said, that really stayed with me. Parang, when you design, it shouldn't be uh, cosmetic. There's always a reason behind the design. Um, so, yon, siguro every time we approach a, a project, hindi lang talaga more on aesthetics. There's really uh, parang data driven, then in a way, there's a reason behind everything. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Well, another point I had to touch up on is how the firm adapted to the pandemic. Uh, again, last year, only last year, 2019, that our firm started to uh, expand uh, six people. Na kami. Pero, you know, when, when the pandemic broke, uh, we had to cut down on working hours and, you know, work from home. And Again, it also was a time for us to revisit our plans and uh, yung, because we had to change talaga everything and including the financials of the, the studio. Uh, so I guess um, right now, the things that are inside our heads, parang it's more like survival lang. Uh, again, it's a it's real a struggle. Kasi malit lang kami na na studio eh, and, and um, most of our projects are uh, if not cancelled, then yeah, um, we had to adjust the timeline. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's really not. Uh, yeah, I guess because everything has been touched up on, uh, so most of uh, the items that I was about to share, uh, and I explain it then. Um, Rainier, um, yeah. Question here. Can I ask the question to you and then? Sure. To, sure. to segue then into the into our Q and A, we can sure, ask sure. Uh, other speakers to also answer the question. So Rainier, what is the most challenging project you've experienced? So far, and how did you manage to overcome the challenges of the project? If you may share, lang. Okay, um, it has to be the Tagay Tagay Thai project. Uh, physically, it was challenging because it, it was sloping down. There is an 11, 11 meter difference in uh, from the roadside going to the rear of the property. And when we were doing the design, we had to. Uh, of course, there's the client brief, but we were also limited with the uh, footprint, building footprint uh, allowed by the uh, local authorities within Tagaytay Highland. Um, so that's also one. And when we actually, well, the, the first proposal that we presented, yun, yeah, it was already approved. Um, very minor changes, lang, pero uh, when we d 
the budget was being uh, uh, produced, we had to go back to the drawing board again. Because, uh, of course, again, we only uh, wanted to give everything to the client. Uh, they were happy, actually, but at the end of the day, I think the budget really matters. Mm. Um, so, like, yeah, we had several uh, sit-downs again with them and together with the other uh, consultants, quantity surveyor. So, yeah, I think that's the most challenging part. Because the design, man, the approach design, we uh, we practically solved everything. We and again, they were happy with the solution. Pero in a, the budget, uh, is, it skyrocketed. So mm -hmm. yeah, yun 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 naging major problem talaga. Thank you, Rainier. Thank yeah. you, Tag. Yeah. Um, yeah. To, to I have start a question, lang. Angel okay. Saglir. <laughs> I I'm I'm just curious with with Rainier. Why? Because yes. uh, I, I, you uh, have the name, uh, 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 Archie Culture. What yeah. do you mean by that? About well, it's, it's, of course, we wanted to establish uh, culture. Because yeah, we, we worked in Singapore for almost half a decade and we realized that it's really about uh, establishing yung good working uh environment within the, the studio and of course yung the way you design there's like there's a term taste making mm -hmm. and I felt like parang we had to ingrain that to all of our staff um, again to, to uh, establish that culture uh, creative culture within the office so, yeah, that's why. But that's the main, ano talaga, that's why, uh, why we wanted the culture to be in, in our new. Mm. Okay, thank you so much, Rainier. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my, my, I, I really appreciate what you uh, presented kanina when you said your, your design inspiration was the work of uh, uh, Miss Van Der Rohe. Ma yeah. Diba? yeah. Parang, parang I, I remembered the time that when, when I met uh, uh, a historian, no, sabi niya sa akin, uh, when I was a, an exchange, to, uh, when I was an exchange uh, student, sabi niya sa akin, it's very important that we value and we understand history and be yes. inspired by their work because if we do a modern building without that as a as a parang background, parang ano yung ano yung essence, ano yung spirit nung ginagawa natin na modern architecture. So I I really appreciate that no when you shared that uh, you were inspired by by history as well. So in in my in my case no in foundry that's what that's what we are promoting no uh, with our students to really not just understand history of architecture and to study for the boards no for the alley but uh, uh, to to really understand no architecture and history you know so that uh, when we produce uh, a modern building no hindi lang siya yung parang uh, wala, walang ano walang spirit parang walang wala siyang laman ano so uh, yeah so sa sa mga essence niya sit na tinuturo natin dito sa foundry thank you so right. much thank yes you. yeah i think uh, this is a great opportunity to segue into a kind of panel discussion uh, yeah okay and I guess the floor is open to questions from uh, the people watching. Um, what we can do is you can type in all of your questions there, then we'll call you uh, one by one. And if uh, you're willing to, you know, um, ask it out loud uh, with video on, uh, it'll be better that way. So at least we can see your face. I'd like to start um, and build up on your point, Gerard, Gerard about history. Okay. If you think about history and uh, certain periods in architecture, more often than not, the architect, uh, the period is often a response, sometimes an opposite response to the previous period in the way that, you know, modernism or the international style was a response to the overly decorated structures preceding them, right? 
and the way that, let's say, postmodern responded to modernism and so on. I think it's the same phenomenon. It's not just true in architecture, but also among generations. Diba? Like uh, the millennials are responding a certain way because of the previous generation. The Gen Z is responding a certain way. So my question to everybody, to Jaime, to Kevin, uh, to, and to uh, Chris, um, and to, of course, to Tag, is, um, I mean, th this will be a loaded question, so it's up to you to choose uh, which <laughs> question. To so what, what are you guys, because your, your, your presentation and then a, a lot of tips and advice for the younger practitioners, younger than you, right? So let's flip the coin. Uh, what are you guys reacting to from the previous generation? What did you learn from the previous generation? And what do you hope that the previous generation uh, could learn from you in the way that you do things uh, right now? I mean, like, because uh, I think uh, that's the whole purpose of this is so that there's a cross-generational space between you and us us and previous and you and the next practitioners uh, that will that will come right mm -hmm. and so Teo, you're related directly to us uh, what are you reacting to uh, it doesn't have to be specific to a particular firm to a particular person but in general what 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 are you reacting to what is the most important lesson that you learned from previous generation and what do you hope that we could learn from you Who would like to start? <laughs> I may go ahead. I may would like to start. Go ahead. Okay. So yeah. Um I would say we are reacting to the way things are done. And that's a very general idea. It can be interpreted in many kinds of ways. But uh and this is not just for you, Sir Jason, because majority of my past experiences with you, but I also worked with uh Bong Resho. I also worked with uh, uh, the ones uh, G G N plus P, the ones who do most of the McDonald's. Uh, and then on my plus end, the man, I'm speaking on her behalf. She worked for um, her dad's uh, the part uh, the company where her dad's a partner, TVAP, so uh, Topi Vasquez, and Idea, of course. So the way when we sit back, we really have these discussions, me and Marta. We, we think about um, how things are done. Parang architecture in the Philippines is very, it's, it's done in, in just the way we're doing it right now. You know, uh, our services are project management, construction, design. Of course, right now, kami, design lang talaga. You have those others who sort of uh, cross cross trades in a sense that they provide engineering or they specialize. But what we learned is that this is not the only way to do things. There are so many other ways that we can provide our services. Um, there are so many ways to find a design solution. There are so many ways to, to approach a certain project. Um, it's not only SDDD, CD, for example. Like for like what what's in a there's there's the overlapping of prototyping dun palang sa SD, diba? so it's generally that the way things are done. Uh, we don't know what we are going to do yet, but we 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 keep our minds open because at the end of the day, it's it's those things that will set ourselves apart. Yeah, right. so but although my. And although my passion is really with design, it's right, yeah. how do I, how do I, what is my edge when it comes to design? Right. Those are the things that we think about. So if, I guess, um, if I were to communicate this to my mentors, my old mentors, what, what are we trying to make you guys understand? It's really, you know, I guess, open that discourse. Uh, it's sad that I hear like for example, from my staff uh, or the interns that I've worked that 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 joined their company, they talk about their other internship programs or other past experiences, and until now, you 
they are being scolded for doing things the wrong way because that's how the firm does things. So I, be, I really believe that it should be a constantly, you know, it's a, it should be a constant discourse when it comes to these things. Now, it's not just one way of doing things. Great, great. Yeah, so, so what's, what's great with what you said is that even though your passion is design, uh, mm -hmm. your critique is really in the way that design and architecture is being produced and even uh, offered as a service. Mm -hmm. It can actually grow in uh, a lot of um, other ways. Who else would like to chime in? Kevin, uh, Christian, Rainier, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, on I'll go first, Siguro. Uh, well, with me and Andrew and Kat, we, we had previous offices na medyo traditional yung mga uh, principals. No? So when we started Headroom, una agad namin sinabi, dapat may beer sa ref. <laughs> <laughs> Our approach is super uh, yeah. informal, kumbaga. Uh, I think walang masyadong playfulness sa mga previous offices namin. Right. Kaya the way we do itong headroom, eh, medyo makukulit talaga yung mga tao dito. And we observe na mas nakatulong siya sa output namin. So we're not really, we did not start headroom actually as a reaction. No? We, 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 we know that we wanted to have our own practices. And we want it to reflect our personalities and our philosophies, not necessarily a reaction to our previous uh, mentors. Pero from what I observe, we also want to. Gusto rin namin baguhin din yung landscape din ng profession, like sinabi ng ni Jaime, no? Eh, yung offerings ng architects ngayon very iba iba na. Eh, hindi siya trap. I think kailangan ng revise yung ano eh, yung profession code natin. Uh, UAP kaya mag double time dyan eh. Ayusin na nila yung code na yan. Uh, yung mga packages natin. I think, pati sa marketing natin. Uh, kasi, sa, ano, di ba, bawal pa tayo mag-advertise na sarili natin. Pero with the dawn of social media, nagkaaroon ng gray area eh. So, kailangan din nilang repasuhin yun. So, yun ang sa amin. Mas more on the reactions kami sa old practices na obsolete na. Great. So, yun. No real on that. Christian? Hi. Uh, my, on our side, I think um, um, I worked with Manosa, and he's actually my uh, architectural hero, as I would say. Um, he's the one that inspired uh, us actually to uh, start and pursue Bam architecture. Uh, yung introduction to innovating natural materials, pushing the limit. But at the same time, uh, we also observed the limitation on how uh, they utilize it meaning non-structural and uh, um, quite, uh, well, they are used to their workflow, so I cannot pay them, but uh, what we want um, on our uh, goal is to actually push more, continue uh, what they started, push more on the unexplored side, and uh, uh, what do we want uh, the future to uh, learn from us? I think uh, us, what we want is ma maraming matuto and uh, uh, mag-practice uh, ng Babo architecture more than a limited firm or more than a limited designer. Uh, and uh, for us, one way of it is uh, through, through implementing and through uh, teaching uh, others who helping them uh, as well through uh, details and um, uh, visibility. But I think that's uh, the end goal. It's uh, more of a passing and continuation of uh, an innovation. From one generation to from one generation to the, to the another, so it's more of transferring that mindset of uh, progress, of continuous learning, of innovation, rather than reacting to uh, you know a fixed mindset. No? Um, before we go to Rainier, Gerard, um, Angel, would you like to chime in? Coming from the previous, year? or I see that Buck's uh, video is on and your mic is preparing <laughs> to. Uh, I already know you, Buck. That's not something to say. Yeah, what you just it will heard. take thirty minutes. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <laughs> thank you for sharing. Um, thank you for, of course, Foundry, our partners, and uh, thank you for uh, uh, for you guys sh uh, sharing the four uh, 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 firms and studios. As you all know, even um, us as colleagues, we all know each other, and first and foremost, we know we know what's excellent work, and I'd like to applaud you on that because that's crucial in the progress of our profession. It's not about the fees. It's not about the rules. It's really in terms of progressing and challenging 
uh, what we can do. And in a way, Jason <laughs> uh, asked my first question. We, I may not have a, another question, but it's what it, what's, it's what's beautiful is um, if you notice, guys, that um, as much as he mentioned that you're uh, the next, probably the, probably you're like a tad generation below us. Is there a such there might be such a thing in terms of the timeline, which is fine. Right. Um, I love history. Mm-hmm. I love that evolution will always come from history and from this reaction. So contrary to Kevin, you saying that it is still a reaction, Kevin. I know it's still a reaction to progression. You're learning. You want to take in the idea. You want to do it by yourself and really test it, right? So that's the beauty of the practices that I want to celebrate with the the four uh, four teams right now. Just like how Jason and I, fresh out of college, the turn of millennia, would say that, what is going on with architecture? We were bored. We were bored, and then we were so. We were so happy that a few of our heroes came back. Um, well, George was always here. Yulo, yeah. Joe Yopanko, Ed Kalma, um, Alex Medalia for, my, for me. They came back. They had this kind of uh, mentality. And it's, ha- we have this shared mentality. And that's something I'd like to, you know, I'd like to express that, that that's very crucial to progress our profession. Having said that, um, what I liked about how you mess- gave us a message in terms of and how we want to give this message to our profession and to future um, colleagues of ours is that to produce excellent work, as much as Kevin said, you gotta be good and gotta be fast, which is very, very crucial. To produce excellent work, you need to do the detailing, you need to do the homework. And that's very, very crucial. Um, and that's the first one that you see with um, Sangai Architects and they, when they mention that. And that's very crucial for everyone from Jason's team, my team, every team that we feel that has that uh, exemplary work, has that specific thing that we have, to, we have a voice to be empowered to say to our clients and to give more time for investigation. Another thing I really like about the talks is especially... Um, uh, remember when uh, Jaime said about um, we do not need to be boxed in in terms of the building industry, the built environment. You know? Designer lang, architect lang has to be part of the services of the package of the architect. Um, what we're like, what we're, what we want to espouse is really actually in terms of how we are built to be thinkers and to be doers. And that's very crucial right now in the critical stage of whatever society has right now in the pandemic, et cetera. No, it's not, regardless if the pandemic is here or not, it may have accelerated. This external uh, crisis has accelerated some um, notions of, you know, when people are a bit complacent, then, hey, we got to step it up and accelerate. And that's something that comes out of, you know, external uh, factors like these. So it, it's very crucial for everyone uh, uh, listening and everyone here in the panel, and everyone in the speakers that, yes, I would also agree that ev- a lot of the speakers here will have that specific mindset that architecture is not just about building. Architecture is not about just a service, you know. There's more to that and probably that's just probably our tool. But at the end of the day, creativity, innovation, ethics and values are the most crucial things that you find in any tech company in any successful company as well, you know? So these things are just, I, w- I just wanted to really point out, I might not have a question, huh? I just want to comment. <laughs> you were right about the 30 minutes. Uh, so yeah. lastly as well, I want to load that uh, Kevin and Headroom has a value proposition. And right. that's very crucial, guys, because you have to have a strategy, you know? When you come in, you would know that, hey, I'm not going to be as good as Jason. I'm not going to be as good as Ed right away. I'm not, you're not going to be, you have a standpoint in where you are. You have to be honest to yourself, but you have to move forward to say, I need a strategy. So this value proposition, I, I, I commend, I commend Headroom for that, you know, really providing that business strategy. And that's a very honest uh, stake. And uh, I look forward uh, speaking with anyone in the future. You can always share, you know, you can always uh, approach us as, as well. Uh, the o- the only person I've met actually is Maita in Amsterdam. <laughs> she was gracious enough wow. to be with us at WAF. 
No, so um, yeah, we we look. This community is is very crucial. That we have to have that uh, driving force, not only for talks, but of course where we are when we uh, you know inspire and show the work to our interns and to our team. The way Bobby has inspired Christian and so on. So uh, I commend everyone for that. So um, that's my that's my take, Jason. Yeah, yeah. No, I think to build on that, um, yeah, build on that yeah. talk, no, and uh, everybody else who's listening, I think what we really need to develop, uh, guys, is critical thinking. Yeah. That, okay, fine, there's something that the previous generation is teaching and we are reacting to it. But, of course, we need to exercise that critical thinking that, uh, you know, what can I use? What can't I use? What can I, you know, uh, uh, improve? What do I discard? And so on. And, you know, I actually just got a, well, uh, regarding that, I, uh, I think the purpose also of uh, you know uh, events like this and the platforms like this is that the conversation doesn't stop here, right? That the inspiration we don't just come here to be inspired, uh, we come here to propel to be propelled to move forward and to continue the conversation outside of this room room, um, as uh, you know uh, Buck said, you know uh, showcase it with the excellence of your work, um, converse with the people that you meet here exchange notes, all for the betterment of, uh, you know, architectural uh, community. I actually got a message from Angel, and uh, we're down to our last question. And uh, unfortunately, it is a bubble event, so I would like to ask the last question. <laughs> <laughs> guys? All right. Okay. So you guys, um, this is regarding social media. It was touched on a while ago. Uh, again, uh, multiple questions in one statement. Um, how important to you guys is social media because we all know that uh, uh, the, the, the old guards have a negative connotation towards this as was mentioned also by Kevin that you know they're still not allowing it in fact I heard the conversation that they have a list of architects and designers who are sponsoring you know and having their their, their posts uh, being sponsored or paying for their posts because in a way it's advertising, which of course I'm, 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 I'm against as well because the old guards need to kind of accept this as the new reality of uh, the way that work is conducted, right? So how important is social media to you guys, especially that we are existing in this uh, kind of environment of staged truths, you know, that uh, whatever we post out there is in a way uh, um, uh, designed, it's uh, curated to a high uh, degree, um, in a way. Um, and, you know, I just watched this documentary called The Social Dilemma, right? Wherein you post something and these social media networks kind of optimize what you see according to your truth, right? So your truth, just parang your, what you see are the people who agree or are aligned to your truth. And so that becomes your truth and another set of people have their own set of uh, uh, realities that it causes a certain level of uh, uh, divisiveness um, among uh, you know, uh, people, societies, and so on. I mean, as simple as wearing a face mask. There are people who don't believe in wearing a face mask just because that's what they see in social media and so social unrest happens and so on. So how do you guys maintain your truth? Make sure that you are in check uh, relative to the staged truths that social media is actually presenting to you guys. Who would like to start? May I call on Christian? Okay. Yeah. Hi. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, share how the social media affects us. So, well, on Instagram and Facebook, usually we follow hashtags. So, I also what we hashtag are hashtag bamboo architecture, hashtag bamboo, hashtag green, hashtag tropical architecture. So, first, I'd like to um, say how it affects us. So, sometimes when we're, you know, stuck or sometimes when we're... Uh, when we don't know how to progress, we don't, you know, yon, parang we, you just need inspiration, you just need, um, you just want to see um, your network, you just want to see how other people are progressing. Um, you also, um, you follow them, diba? So, and then it affects you positively, in a, it affects you in a, 
in a way that um, you you won't even know um, how like subconsciously pala it develops us. So in terms of um, our direction, in terms of our use of social media, um, we realize, um, and this is true with uh, most of the people messaging us for um, you know interviews or like, questions of how um, we see bamboo architecture of, or how it is now. Um, we realize how important it is in, uh, especially in the bamboo industry, because um, it keeps people aware that it is still progressing. There's still something being done. Um, we're still continuously pushing it, um, despite those. Sometimes, because if there are no posts of uh, so social media, people are going to be asking, "Na, um, wala na ba talaga nagstop na or has it maganon?" Yeah. So, um, we think that it's more of both. Um, it's more of mostly for us and advocacy and then siguro bonus na lang sometimes that when people think na okay um, this is this is free commercialism ah. parang it's just uh, ano for us na um, it's mostly our message na we're developing this we're doing this um, it's the message is uh, loud and clear naman na it's mostly showing other people people who are not really uh, unaware pa uh, of what yeah bamboo can do so yeah so you, you're using it to communicate uh your advocacy your beliefs in a way yeah how about rainier do you have um anything to say about that because um tag Culture, i think is a popular um ig uh, oh. <laughs> thank right? you thank you thank you um anyway i think kasi parang uh you know the the posts that we share it's a way that we introduce ourselves to the public. And siguro nga, yung stage truth, there are positive and negative uh, effects. Pero for us kasi, of course, we want to attract like-minded people. Uh, yun naman talaga ngayon, it, it's about uh, consume, cons, uh, how you want your followers, uh, yung, yung uh, what's the term, the way they consume uh uh information um so yun i think it's we want talaga to attract like minded people kasi di ba sabi nila it's when when you create you need uh good clients to create good uh uh designs and parang if iba iba yun na attract mo parang how are you going to achieve your goal diba to to create a uh, better design. So I think that's one of the positives that we take away from social media. And as for the sponsorships naman, on my part kasi, I don't have a wide network. Uh, wala akong kilalang mga big time personalities. Uh, I only, uh, parang this is, actually, yun nga yung binigay na power ng social media is for you to introduce yourself to the world uh yung yung capabilities mo as a designer uh so yun siguro uh sa old guard i think i think uh medyo uh off sila kasi nga <laughs> pero no no just kidding <laughs> not here <laughs> so yun lang i siguro on my part it, it's very helpful kasi nga i don't have uh, a wide connection uh, I came from an lang talaga normal uh, normal circumstances kumbaga. So right. in this way, uh, a lot of our projects, uh, clients engaged us through social media. Yeah. Um, so yun, I mean, it's 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 really uh, helpful for us. Great. Yeah. So it's like a democratization or um, parang is uh, making it easy for people to access architecture or architecture. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, I would have I would have to agree with with uh, Sangai and and Tag Architecture. Um, on one end, it's for information. Of course, as architects, uh, we're not only about design. We always have um, values, uh, philosophies that we want to advocate. That's one way. It's really the the transfer of information. Um, it's also very useful on our end because. To be completely honest, 
majority of our clients come from Instagram inquiries. And gone are the days that, you know, you have to set a meeting or three meetings even to close a deal. It's a Zoom call away. It's a, it's a direct message and an email exchange for your ideas. Yeah. And as long as you're able to communi communicate your ideas, your, your views, your philosophies truthfully, right. uh, without, without, you know, pambobola, uh, um, then I would say it's only a positive tool for us talaga. Um, another thing that I think um, Rainier touched on was consumption. Yeah. So the, the, what you mentioned, Sir Jason, about the, the, hon the honesty in social media, um, the most important tool actually is the filter tool. The filter tool. <laughs> and I invite everyone to really exercise filtering everything that you are looking at in social media. If you don't filter, then that's when really social media can be your downfall. Right. And, and, I've, and I've had a system in the whole world. You can't help but be affected by all these negative news and everything. So it's one thing to be aware. It's another thing to react to those news. And it's another thing altogether to consume everything. Yeah. So we just have to be responsible with it, with social media talaga. Right, yeah. Agree. Um, I think uh, last, is not, uh, last but not the least, of course, Kevin, will, uh, would you like to say something about that? And then I think after you, Angel uh, will wrap up. Yeah, so I'll touch on kay, uh, Jaime. No? Uh, I tried your filtering for anyway, snooze for 30 days. No? Nag-browse ako sa friends ko. After 30 days, sabay-sabay sila lumabas ulit eh. So, <laughs> so, what I did now is, actually, yung sinasabi ni Jason kanina, dangerous din kasi, I think, Jaime, kapag pinilter mo lahat eh, magkakaroon ka ng sinasabi nilang echo chamber. Right. Kumbaga, right. one side of the ano na lang is yung lagi mo naririnig. So, I keep a few yellow, I keep a few reds, I keep a few flat earthers there. Just, right. you know, to, to <laughs> makita na akong iba't ibang opinion every now and then. <laughs> Yeah. But okay, to be, to be serious naman, sa social media naman ni Hedrew, meron kaming guidelines kasi. Um, one, tama yung sinabi ni Jaime, iwasan natin yung ball, ball architecture. Alam mo yung uh, mga write-ups ng first year, second year sa concepts nila, alam mo talagang ginagawa, hindi na legit eh. So, iniiwasan namin yun um, as much as possible um, kung ano yung personality namin. So, kasi Andrew siya yung nagsulat ng copy, makikita mo yung personality niya doon. Pag ako yung nagsulat, makikita mo yung personality. Secondly, uh, wag mo ipopost yung fee mo. <laughs> Yun yung advertising, I think. At ang gray area natin sa social media is kailangan mag-show tayo ng content na may value at talagang nagsasabi ng something about the profession and not necessarily about you. Yun yung iwas mo doon sa demanda ng pahirap ng UAP. No? So, I think si Buck na-victimize na to last year and two years ago. Eh. So, Yun yung pwede nating gray area, no? So, communicate something of value. And yun talaga yung playing field natin ngayon, nasa screen, nasa glass screen. And we have to take advantage of that and be responsible also. So, yun Thanks, lang. Kevin. Uh, I think we all learned a lot. Uh, that's an understatement. So, Angel, the floor is yours. Thank you for that question. <laughs> so, guys, uh, this is Spark. When you found on something at, at a foundry, sparks fly. And you keep on pounding until you shape the metal into your desired shape. Uh, likewise, uh, the intent of sparks and babble is to create the venue for discussion, for dialogue. There's no right and wrong answer. Uh, we uh, promote respect for each other's opinions. And the uh, uh, with the intent of driving the profession, driving the practice into a new, better normal for everyone. Um, so guys, this is new practice. Uh, thank you for joining our Sparks and Babble.